Unless he has 92 check. Oh, he has 92. Is there going to be a crazy mate? I, I want to watch Carilla's stream. There's, okay, he almost could have played 94 first, though. He took. Then he takes, and rook h8, followed by rook takes h4. That's why you do your tactics, kids. Right there, that's pattern recognition at its best. And our second Royal Arena Kings is getting set to start within the next six minutes here on Chess.com. International Master Danny Wrench with all of you. Thanks to all of our Twitch chatters and those at Chess.com TV who've been with me for the better part of the last half hour as we have been doing a long preview here. Let's dive into who's already signed up. We can see that the list is um, growing. The biggest name that everybody immediately recognizes, or maybe I'm, maybe I'm assuming things. I think there are a couple of big names immediately on screen, of course, between Alexandra Kostinyuk, the women's world champion herself, former women's world champion, uh, Grandmaster Georg Meyer. Those two have been regulars as far as big household chess names. But today, we've got even more uh, names that, that may surprise you as far as title players jump throwing their hat in the Twitch chess streamers arena. Uh, before we get to those, of course, Bicky. Bicky, our boy Bigfoot. You can see him at twitch.tv slash Bigfoot. You got Aaron Hawaii, also twitch.tv slash Aaron Hawaii. Uh, but as I said, you've got Igor Kavalenko. Uh, we've got the Samurai, maybe the most consistent title player of all, actually. Doesn't win as many as Georg Meyer, but he he's pretty much always here. I'm not sure that guy ever sleeps. He's on chess.com at all times. Uh, but as I said, there are some new big names here. Um, here's Stewie Griffin. Uh, that, of course, is a, a regular name we know. Casper also streaming. But as I was trying to... Oh, there he is, the Count, Christian Carilla, the Thrilla, Mr. Carilla did decide to jump in. He was trolling me on Twitch just a few minutes ago. For those of you who are watching this replay, maybe later on in your busy schedule, maybe you're catching this on YouTube, but uh, join the live experience and, and hang out with all of us at Twitch whenever we're doing these things. There's John Bartholomew, Finzo905, and the person I was trying to get to, but so many people are signing up, the list keeps expanding. Yevgeny, Yevgeny Sharapov, now at twitch.tv slash Yevgeny Sharapov. So there you go. If you haven't followed his channel, that's a grandmaster we haven't seen, uh, at least to my knowledge. Lawrence Trent, Alexander Lenderman, also up in this, regular streamers. And um, Lenderman, of course, coming this close to winning the first Royal event that we had just a couple days ago on Monday. And for those of you who are wondering, what is the difference between the Arena Kings Streamers Championship, the regular Arena Kings that we're holding every week, and the Royal format? Well, let me answer those questions right now. So the season that you're watching on twitch.tv slash chess, chess.com TV, wherever you are, this is the first season that we've ever had in regards to having a streamer's championship. Every week we have two arena events going down on chess.com, bullet on Mondays, blitz on Wednesdays. The normal points awarded are those that you see in the left column. The Royal Arena Kings happen once a month, or three, if you will, per season, uh, since it's not exactly once a month, but three events award bigger points more points and of course bigger prizes before we get to the prizes you can see that all of those points are designed to help qualify people and get them into the streamers championship where even more points are available potentially where if someone wins the streamers championship they might win the whole thing the prizes available also increase with events like this the royal the royal arena kings we were just trying to come up with something that sounded like hey you're in an arena it's a battlefield coliseum we're like royal battle royale right i don't know but then you know there's all kinds of clash royale so who needs more of that there you go but the, the, today on the line is 250 bucks for first place uh but really these points that they're getting will help qualify them into the streamers championship which is where the big money is on those on uh, those back-to-back -back events which will be happening in august on that note when will they be happening in August? Right here. You see day one and day two scheduled there on the right side of uh, your screen. Today is, of course, June 6th. That is our first Blitz Royal Arena Kings. Now, one of the things that we didn't clarify enough in, uh, on Monday in our, in our first Royal event is that the other thing that makes these events special, it's not just the extra points, it's how the streamers have to get those points. In order to be available for any cash prizes and points, you must be streaming. So there's a lot of people that play in these events that aren't streaming, and that's fine, but they are not eligible for prizes. So if you're interested in streaming, reach out to us and uh, we'll help you uh, get a Twitch channel going. But 
everybody streaming is trying to get themselves into the elimination knockout bracket that happens only on the Royal events. The rules to those brackets are what you see here. The top eight streamers are going to advance into this knockout, which is going to start roughly five minutes after the main event, the arena, finishes. The matches that they're playing are a bunch of mini best of five matches. If the score is tied after five games, as you can see, there will be an Armageddon game in which white has five minutes, but black has three minutes with draw odds, a pretty standard time control that a lot of our titled partner streamers within our program, guys like Jan Ludwig Hammer, Jorg Meyer, all kind of agreed that seemed to be the most fair thing to do. Uh, but players must continue streaming throughout the entire event in order to remain eligible for all prizes. So. There you have it. The event is getting set to start. I'm going to go ahead and bring up a chessboard as we take a look at who jumps in at the last second here. We already have um, a lot of people ready to get going here. Um, as we said, Chess Queen, Georg Meyer, some of those that we've been following. Shout out real quick to all those of you with us here on Twitch. Those of you who've been with us the whole time, of course, the lovely Chess Bay. We've got Rajesh. We've got Liam Shez. We've got everybody with us. Thanks to all of our subscribers, all of our premium members. With you, all things are possible. And uh, with you, I am going to now be covering what we know is the Arena Kings event. Just like that, it has begun. We have Alexander Lenderman taking on Mr. John Bartholomew. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into this analysis, if you will. We have... Officially 119 minutes left. As you can see, that timer is the one that's ticking away. So all chess players in these events are competing not just against their opponents, but also the overall clock. Get as many points as you can. Go streaking through the gymnasium. Keep your clothes on in this format. And uh, we're going to have a blasty. So 3-0 chess. That is one of the most... It's my favorite time control. I'm not sure all of you. Maybe let me know in the Twitch chat and Chess TV, actually. I'm curious. What's your favorite time control to play? A lot of our data would surprise you as far as the most popular time control. Take a guess. That's fun for the Twitch chat as the show gets going here. I'd like to know what's your favorite time control to play on chess.com, and what do you think is the most popular time control of all of our members? This will be fun to see. Chess Bay loves 5-0. Good to know. Uh, for those of you who don't subscribe to my podcast, please do. Soundbite.fm, blunders.fm is... Uh, Blunders.fm. That's where I do my weekly podcast. Check it out. Looks like David1669 is either a genius or he just reads all articles by our CEO very closely, but he's right. 10 minutes. 10-0, right? I'm surprised by that. Who has time for 10 minutes? Apparently a lot of people. In fact, hundreds of thousands more games are played in 10 minutes every week than every other time control. Um, so fascinating. And I think partly that's because when we onboard so many new users and chess.com brings in so many new people to the, the global chess ecosystem, right? Because we're just fortunate that we have that domain name. People find us on the web and before they know it, they're playing chess. And I think because we, it's just because we have it as the default time control because we don't want to push a lot of newcomers into playing bullet chess, right? So I, I'm going to guess it's purely because it's the default, but I'm always surprised that 10 is so popular. Um, anyway, but here we go. No, Brother Josh, not 2-1. That's your favorite. That's not everybody else's favorite. All right, Lenderman seems to be on the grind here. Finn's got himself in trouble. He's prying open B7, which is going to bring the lady into C6 with, uh, with either magical stuff happening on B7, if that's what you're into when the king and queen get together for a mate, or, uh, or bad stuff happening if you're not into that kind of mate. So there you go. First inappropriate reference of the day. We've been live for five minutes. Hashtag you're welcome. Now, Lenderman has his choice of how to bust things through here. Take on B7 right away or maybe build on the tension. I would probably take and then shake and bake. Uh, okay, no. So he's going to relocate. The problem is the longer he waits, Finns might play B6. Now that the Rook is guarding C6, he's potentially risking that his attack meets a standstill. I guess one of the biggest issues if you're Finns is that you don't, and that's John Bartholomew, of course. You can follow him, twitch.tv slash John Bartholomew, um, is you don't, you're not, in love with this idea no matter what, right? Because then your rook is forever imprisoned to guarding the c6. Okay, so he's going to get dynamic with it. Um, closely related, if you're wondering, to Will Smith's get jiggy with it. Um, he's going to get dynamic with it, and after queen takes a6, he's going to try to defend, I'm guessing, with knight to b6. Um, certainly taking b1, not a possibility, because of queen takes c8 check intermizzo. 
Um, I still, you know, Finns is still in big trouble. That's that's the bottom line. And as you can see with the standings above me, we already have our first person to win to win two of two. Immediately jumping out against his peers is Tomato FB. You can see here that little gray fire. What that means is they've won two in a row, so they're immediately eligible to start getting bonus points. The fun thing about the arena format is that the more games in a row you win, the more extra points you get. So uh, he does play knight b6, as I predicted. I think Lenderman is still in complete control. He's going to try to come around, watch for Finns to play queen to b7, um, but still just in big trouble here, especially with no increment. Okay, now here comes knight a5, and, uh, and that's a problem. Yeah. Plus, this is a this is a two board scenario, right? This is a this is a scenario where Lenderman is in control of both sides of the board. He owns the F file, he owns the B file, he owns all entry points that are that are worthy of noting. Um, there's no way for this knight to move because B8 is a problem. Okay, trading makes sense, but again, I think Lenderman is just going to sit tight. Nice move, Queen A3, building up the tension here. At some point here, tactics will happen. Whether it's bishop c2 followed by coming around to a4, yeah, I uh, I saw it first, Alex. Hashtag deal with it. Now rook f1, perhaps pin the knight. Yep, close the tension. Then get back to the plan over here with bishop a4 as soon as e4 is not a problem. Uh, so he kicks the knight, which is also good. And as soon as that knight goes to h6, watch for bishop a4, and uh, or bishop d8 actually. Now, ooh, I saw it first. Still, can someone can someone you know maybe we could clip that. I know it's inappropriate to ask for clips on Twitch, but we want to make sure that Alex knows. I'm, I'm just kidding. Don't clip it. Because then it's awkward, right? It's like, now you've ruined it, Danny. It's like explaining the punchline of a joke, right? The joke is no longer funny. Good job. Okay, this one's over. Finns resigns, and we move on to the game that just started between two other grandmasters, Igor Kavalenko and the Thrilla Mista Carilla. The Thrilla Mista Carilla known as the count on chess.com. So you like how I'm holding it right here, a little coffee, right, a little tea, a little coffee right in the afternoon. Okay. Wow. This is a this is a blitz bullet opening if I've ever seen one. All out offensive things happening with Harry the H pawn here. He's a real wizard. H six perhaps now I would maintain the tension. How do we get our pawn back? E4 is something to consider with ideas of big center, you know. But it's not the size that counts. It's how you use that center. And actually, E4 would probably be a mistake because of C5 undermining this, uh, this structure here, which is not really a threat as long as you have overprotection of D4. So rook B1 was better by Kavalenko. Look for this knight to try to get to F4, but queen D5, that's a good move, right? Makes, makes life a little hard. It hits g2, so the bishop can't get out. Now he's swinging over to hit c3. I'm anticipating, let's see, I guess, yeah, the queen should guard it because you don't really want to put the knight on e2 and block your own bishop here. Oop, that's not what I meant to do there. So let's go back to the game. Knight d7. Uh, so what do we do now? Knight f3. Perhaps Kovalenko just needs to be aggressive. Develop his pieces. B7 is falling, but not really. What Kirill is saying is, that, oh, if you take it, here comes knight B6. Okay, Kirill was, was risking that pawn sacrifice for the exact reason uh, that that rook might get trapped, but then he just, maybe he decided he didn't have enough for that. I guess C7 was hanging, so I was wrong about that. If knight B6, C7 was falling, and, and that's why Kirill, so either he blundered B7 or... Um, and, and miss bishop c7, or he or he feels that he still has some compensation. I'm starting to like Kavalenko's game a little more. Okay, but if count takes here, if Kirilla takes there, and then punches with e5, I like that. You want to attack this strong point in the center if you can and undermine it. I'm surprised by that. I guess he wants the e4 square. So in Blitz, we have a little more time to analyze, despite what Nezmadinov says. And I think that I think that this makes a lot of sense. You know, especially if black can open things up, you're kind of getting the similar access you want, and you're you're leaving white structure a little vulnerable here. That that c3 pawn has has issues. So so I'm not sure I really am in love with Christian's approach. Let's keep our eye on the standings here. A couple of title players still in the mix. We have our first players catching heat, catching fire. We'll see how quickly that fire turns to red. And they're earning themselves some bonus points as they try to get ahead. 
Ooh, Hammer's jumping in. Jan Ludwig has been doing amazing commentary for anybody who speaks Norwegian. He's, you know, really, to be fair, the most sought-after chess commentator in Norway, right? Uh, Magnus Carlsen being the top chess player, Hammer is, Hammer is really known for, uh, for his insights in, in both English and Norwegian. His, his Twitch channel, I think, you know, he's bilingual, right? He goes both ways. But um, as far as, you know, doing coverage in Norway, which does a better job doing doing official TV coverage of chess than better than any other country on the planet. Hammer does well there. So if he just got out of that and he's jumping into the Arena Kings, good for him. Good for Hammer. Cool, 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 cool. Thanks for letting me know, babe. 1,600 of you now. Thanks for being here. This is the Arena Kings, the second event we've done this week. All players are trying to qualify themselves into the Streamers Championship, uh, which will be happening in August. So everybody that you see me analyze is likely streaming their own games, their own personal point of view while I'm providing coverage of the overall event. So if you see anybody you like, consider going to their channel, giving them a follow. Who knows? Maybe even a subscription. We love supporting the chess community. Um, so if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. All right, bishop h6. This is nice. This is So the, the problem here in this Fienkettle setup is that black, okay, he's going to take it. It's a peace sacrifice. Bishop takes g7. is going to be followed by queen h6, but the king runs out. The king runs out to f6. I think the count believes he can escape. After, after queen h6, king f6, the queen can come back to f4, which actually forks the king and the knight, but the king hides on e6, and where, where is Kavalenko's knockout blow? As I was highlighting, the problem with the h-file here, if black loses the bishop, is he's going to get mated, but as soon as, as, soon as I said that, I, I, I realized the piece had to be sacrificed in order for Kavalenko to get this sort of pressure. Now, in a bullet setting with only 27 seconds, don't be surprised if Kavalenko, Kavalenko swindles his way to this victory anyway, but I don't think this sacrifice really has the beef. Um, I think that Kirilla would normally be fine. Um, that, of course, being the count here. Okay, but in a setting like this, is he going to be able to defend? I think he will. I'm going to say that Kirilla gets his way out of this because Kavalenko was also down on time here. Bishop f5. Okay, no, no, bishop f5 would have allowed takes, and then queen g5 would have been a problem. So rook e8, that's accurate. Okay, now maybe run the king. Get out. No! Okay, why? He did, Oh, he prevented queen g5 with the... Oh, that, this was better. Queen, king e7 was better before, and I thought he mated himself with queen e7. But this is really what he should have done before. He does eventually get to it. The king puts on his running shoes, and he's going to be just fine. Here comes rook e4, followed by queen e3 check. Okay, queen e3 was better, but rook h4 will also do the trick with mate. He missed rook h1 checkmate. He missed it. Knight f2 check. He's missing his mate. He had mate in one on the board. As if he doesn't win this game, that's huge. He only has two seconds. King h2 is going to run into... Okay, black one on time. Uh, eventually, the Kavalenko seems to have just lost the thread. But to be honest, it's not very often you see a GM of Kirilla's level miss the move rook h1 checkmate in one. Perhaps he simply forgot that the knight was guarded by the queen. Either way, we tip our hat to Kirilla for winning. We give him a wag of the finger for the fact that he didn't see the mate in one. And we move on to our next game, shall we? Let's. How's Alexander Lenderman doing? On five points, that means he's about to go streaking through the gymnasium. We got Artok Manukin. For those of you who don't know who Artok is, Artok is the manager of the reigning Pro Chess League champion, Armenian Eagles. Um, a great guy, swell guy, and the Armenia Eagles won the first ever real, really eSport chess event. Um, it, was, it was amazing in, in super dramatic fashion. So good luck to our talk Manukin today. Uh, the one person I haven't given close enough attention to who's really leading the overall standings is Georg Meyer. Only at three points, I say only, he'll get going. Uh, one of the things about the, the chess.com system is it's designed to really weigh and, and balance fair and uh, we'll call it uh, close pairings as far as strength goes over their position in the standings. And so at the start of the event, because of that, GMs are playing GMs, low-rated players are playing low-rated players. So the GMs tend to be a little bit slower going, right? Faced with, in theory, some tougher competition. Once they start you know, putting those streaks together, uh, hard, hard to put out that fire. But uh, right now, Georg is, is getting faced off with probably the strongest other player outside of him in the overall event, if I, if I may be so bold. So 2,800 is nothing to sneeze at here. Um, and so Georg is, is going to have to 
have to find find a way to work it with no diggity. Why not knight g5, Yorg? Do it. Do it. Knight g5. Bring it. Knight g5 is a double attack. Ah, oh, I think he missed that. Knight g5. Okay. Knight g5 has a double threat. Okay. It hits f7 and threatens bishop takes c6 check because the pawn is pinned. Okay. Indeed, knight e5 would be a move to defend, but now d4 would be super strong, undermining the knight, which, of course, is increasing the uh, the attack over here on f7. So I think Jorg may have missed that, to be honest. I wonder if he missed just how strong um, knight to g5 was. He's still on the grind here. This is an exchange sacrifice, which is what you call it when you give up a rook. Sorry, a rook for the bishop, which is what he did. This is a situation where white was more than happy to do it because this light square bishop is probably more valuable than any other piece on the board right now. Uh, I mean, bishop to c6 check is a is a real problem. Even moves like f6 to run out are not going to fully solve the issues that black has on the light square. So this is certainly an exchange stack that we can justify and say that Georg made a, made a good decision. Um, I still think knight g5 was stronger earlier, but we'll see if he can if he can put this one away. Uh, for those of you who don't know that you can follow the Arena Kings all year on all of these channels, I'm just going to remind you of that right now, 1,700 of you with us. Uh, heading over to our, our streamers page, what we've got here is, uh, okay, right now we've got, that's the Chess Broad channel, but we got people like Bigfoot streaming, go to twitch.tv slash Bigfoot. We've got Mikey Slice. We've got uh, the Thrilla, Mr. Carilla, who's known as the Count. I love that little mouse angle. That's kind of sexy. That's kind of sexy as long as you keep it PG, right? That's a nice mouse angle right there. That's innovative stuff that I don't know that I've seen any other streamer do, honestly. Of course, we've also got John Bartholomew. We mentioned him, okay? He be streaming for 166 of you right now. Blitzstream, I believe, is streaming in French. So if you speak Francais, okay, check, uh, check that out. Abla Francais. That's, a, that's not, that's Fran French glish, like instead of span, span glish, right? And of course, you see a whole lot of other people here. Uh, I'm going to open just a couple more to remind you, but I can't, I can't be following all of them. That is for you to do if you search the chess category on Twitch. Feel free to do so. Uh, this is the, the, royal, the royal Arena Kings, and uh, Georg Meyer looks like he did take care of business in that game as I left it um, and uh, has now jumped out. Has now jumped out. To a, uh, to a six point total score in an, and uh, currently in 16th place. So, um, all right, there we go. That's a reminder of everybody that you are capable. Um, yeah, I love that. I love the mouse. I love the mouse cam, Chespe. I didn't know that he did that. I haven't, I appear, I haven't tuned in. Um, I haven't tuned in enough to his, to his shows recently, to be totally, totally frank. So that's, that's kind of a unique angle um, to provide. I like that. Okay, so Meyer's just getting started. Let's leave him behind. The chess queen herself hasn't gotten a lot of love from us yet, so let's check out her game here. She's up on time and actually currently in second place, so maybe uh, maybe we need to tune in here. You know, the blitz format for for me is is much more. Uh, I like it better than the bullet format. The bullet format is just fun, but it's just like you know everybody's on on some form of you know Adderall or Riddle I don't even know but it's just like it's just bananas right you get a lot more blunders a lot less opportunity for us to sit here and analyze and provide some chess communication which is what I hope to do for all of you today thanks for being here um, but also I think for someone like Costinia gets a little more her speed she's not necessarily the fastest player with the mouse I would play oh I would have played knight f2 to prevent knight e4 I think knight e2 knight f2 first to guard e4 then same idea now she's going to be on the defensive a little bit because this knight is coming around. Yeah, I'm not sure that was the best approach from her. She does have a two-on-one. But back to what I was saying, I think she's just a much stronger player in 3-0 than she is in 1-0. And, and you can see with the time advantage that she has here, 40 seconds to about 10, that's probably going to be, should be enough for her to win this game. Um, you still have this pawn here, but maybe you want to poke over here first. Ah, oh, she did play g5. I'm not sure that was her best. I might have played knight before first. Okay, again, she's in the driver's seat here, but mainly because of the clock. I'm not sure that it's been the best ending we've ever seen. King of four actually induces e5. Now she'll play knight e3. I like that. Move the king and get knight g4 check as soon as you have a chance. Um, okay, king g5 is going to run into h6. Yeah, there's just not enough time at this point. 
So, you know, as, as kind of said, that she, she didn't necessarily have the best technique there. In this position, she's actually now down a pawn in this night ending, but she got the job done, right? And notice she got four points in the standings because as you, as you get on fire, here we see her, currently that fire is moving from yellow to, to orange, right? As she heats up, she's going to get more and more bonus points. So that would be, that would be an awesome an awesome affair. If we could see the chess queen herself in the knockout round of eight, I'd love that. Um, again, for those of you who are just with us, a reminder that the format of today's event is not just the main arena that we normally have. It will actually send the top eight streamers into a bracket. Right now, we don't know who's going to be there, but we're excited to see who will be getting into the bracket, and we will be following all of those games really closely. So this is this is really going to have a lot of action today. Don't go anywhere, um, and uh, and thanks for being here. So. First from last, I don't. I don't really think that that's necessarily true, um, in regards to what the the we'll call them the artists themselves, right? The original creatives on YouTube and Twitch, as far as who earns more. Uh, I think someone like Ninja might have something to say about that. It's different formats, and I, I can I can say that on Twitch, I think the community provides a lot more direct support, and they have the ability and frankly the motivation to do that, which is one of the reasons that Chess.com loves Twitch. But yes, we are partnered with them. I've been trying to follow your conversation there as closely as possible. Chess.com and Twitch do have a partnership and a and a uh, we'll call it a mutual interest in growing the global chess community. Uh, especially as it relates to people sharing sharing their chess on Twitch, and uh, I would argue that Twitch is a is the perfect format for for the future of chess. And I think you know I think YouTube has has uh, the the pros that it is as well. It's much more of a allowing the user to really control what kind of content they want to access because it's 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 their bread and butter has always been a little more passive, right? Pre recorded content. Twitch is a little more about the engagement with the community itself. If I was giving a quick umbrella overall uh, on some of the differences between the platform. I just don't think it's true that YouTuber originals, YouTuber creatives make more money than the, than the top Twitch creatives. I don't think that's true at all. Mmm. Sacrifice on F7. I very much like this. Okay, if you take here, she takes with pawn. And that would be very sexy because she would protect the knight. Now she gives check, queen h4, Bob's your uncle. She's rocking. Okay, black's going to get the knight to F6, but e6 is falling, rook is, ro rook is falling. I'm rooting for Chess Queen right now. She's tied for fourth. I can't wait. I can't wait to see if she can keep up this level of consistency and get herself into the top eight. If you're not following twitch.tv slash, I think Chess Queen. I think Chess Queen. I don't think it's Alexander Kostinyuk. Um, I, would, I would go do that. So there's a, there's a lot of people here, 2,000 of you. Thanks for being here. There's also a lot of options today in regards to following Chess. Uh, not only all the streamers here, the chess bras themselves are covering uh, the Norwegian Super Tournament. So uh, we appreciate everybody who's here, and um, and we uh, we're, we're pretty excited to have you. So so there you go. All right, the standings. Okay, wait. I got to leave this game. As much as we've been enjoying following Kostinyuk, she's been the top title player so far. We have only six seconds. For the young grandmaster from Iran, taken on Georg Meyer, um, Fiorgia 2003 is better. I mean, if I'm being honest here, he's got he's got two he's up the exchange, but Georg has pawns for it, so maybe he's not better actually, given the time disadvantage, as well. Excuse me, um, as well as the fact that there's just no weakness. Excuse me again, uh, the coffee getting to me. There's no weaknesses here for White. Uh, so it's just too much, not enough time to create the kind of counterplay the Rooks need. So Georg Meyer strikes. Uh, we bounce back to uh, Alexander Kostinyuk as she attempts to continue to do work here. Another game going down between two streamers we've already mentioned on the show so far. That's, that's right here between uh, Carilla, the Thrilla. Uh-oh, someone's about to get mated. And uh, no mate will happen because resignation for Stewie Griffin is what he chooses, right? Picking between poisons. But he falls to the count, so good for him. Good for uh, Carilla, continuing to make headway here. We see some players really heating up. Again, getting a few wins in a row. David, David, he's also a streamer. I believe it's just like the username you see here. Uh, and uh, he's so he's doing well on 6 of 6 right now. 
Let's keep our eye on Alexandra as she looks poised to get yet another victory, although this one's not nearly as simple. You could take here. There's no knight g4 because of rook g6 check. So she should have enough pawns that the two rooks would be better than the knight and bishop. And that's actually a really smart decision there. Really simplifies the matter. When you have the two rooks versus a rook, knight, and bishop, typically the rook trade helps you, especially in positions where there's past pawns, because you don't want the rook to work with the knight and bishop, where suddenly they have three pieces to your, to your two. There's just a lot more damage that can be done for them. This should be plenty um, for Alexander to win, although that last choice was not ideal. I will say I had a really bad experience with not exactly the same, but a similar type of game where I thought that the queen would be easily winning against the two minors. And there were, there were more pawns on the board. It was actually against Asuka Nakamura, who's the older brother of Hikaru Nakamura, for those of you who don't know. And, and she's getting herself in a similar position where the knight and bishop coordinate super well. And as you can see, this, is, this, is not, this, is, this hasn't been an easy task. That's all I'm saying. Um, and uh, she should, of course, be totally winning, but I had a similar, like I said, experience that was really, really rough as far as trying to win one of those. I believe I made a video about it on chess.com uh, talking about the, uh, you know, what happens when you have unbalanced material. So she already missed a chance to win the bishop there, but we're going to let her complete this one. Ooh, king e6 was just winning. The knight was pinned. Now she's going to run into check. Uh, oh, that was a blunder. Queen e8, followed by queen h5 and six one. Or queen a8, six one. Uh, but it should be over here momentarily. You could even you could have just sacked there even. Okay, but she takes care of business and she moves to 17 points, um, which is going to be good enough to put her. You know she's maintaining herself as the top title player right now. So, so the chess queen is living up to her name today, at least so far. Georg in a better position here is Sicilian. Okay, what's going on between Bartholomew and Sharapov? Two people that are also streaming. Search for the chess category on Twitch right now and uh, follow all of our chess streamers if you are in, uh, if you are in, uh, into, into chess. You know, so if this is the first time you've tuned in to a big chess show on Twitch, please do so. Yevgeny Sharapov is, I don't know. I think, I think Finns is doing okay. Ooh, especially after that move. Bishop takes a five, queen takes. Trade on d8, and the queen, and, uh, you know, black is, black is really in trouble here. I would trade on d8 and then free the back rank, something like g3, just to get, to get out of dodge. You don't, you don't want to sit here and try to play with a back rank weakness while you're trying to calculate opportunities for the queen to go get the pawns. So Finns chooses to bring the queen back. That's international master John Bartholomew on Twitch. Now he'll probably need to play b3. Um, he does so, but at some point you want to get the back rank free, and uh, right now it's a little irritating because the queen was hitting the knight, so g3 wasn't possible. But as soon as he has a chance, look for him to play g3, and here he goes. He's going to get the king to g2. Sharapov is in a decent situation to draw, but because it's not even the extra pawn that I really like about white structure, it's the fact that these light squares are so weak and the knight is really going to have a field day um, bouncing in and out of those squares. Trading queens, though, also would have been bad if you're wondering, well, if the light squares are weak, why not get the queens off the board so there's no mate? The problem is that here, now, Bartholomew has an easy time ganging up on these weaknesses. So, so Sharapov is, is, I think, you know, would, would be losing and, and probably with ease in a real game against a guy like Bartholomew here. With time being what it is and him only having 20 seconds, I think we should sit tight and see if Bartholomew figures things out. Is he going to play king of three, I wonder? No, he goes back with the queen. Okay. Um, at some point, you want to get this knight unpinned. Okay, he plays f3 in order to do that. Maybe h5 is a threat. Ooh, look for h5. Here it comes. h5 opens up the diagonal because of the knight getting a discovered check. Knight d6, ganging up on g6. The pawn is pinned to the king on h7. Finns should be getting what he needs to get a win. Even just backing up to c4, very good, and hitting the pawn here. Now he can trade everything on g6 and just win the end game. That's what he should do. Very, okay. I'm saying very good as if I'm John's coach, but I'm obviously happy that he showed proper technique there and is, is should be on his way to converting this, even with little time. Okay. Don't prove me. Don't make me a liar, John. Let's play fast here. Not a lot of time, broski. Not a lot of time. There you go. King e2 next. Very good. Move quickly. King f3. Okay, I would have played king f3. You got to get these pawns going. King up. Only five seconds. Four seconds. 
Three seconds for Kavalenko. Fins is putting on the pre-move juice. Okay. He busts out the pre-move juice. Maybe he took a swig of it. I don't know if you know that. That's a, that's a feature on Fortnite. When you get the booty and you get all that stuff, there's pre-move juice. There you go. Pre-move juice. Not to be confused with mojo juice. Just pre-move juice. Um, what's, uh, what's the question? Does Danny stream or just on chess.com? I have my own channel, twitch.tv slash Daniel Wrench. Feel free to go there and give it a follow. Um, the hate will probably now start to come why I don't stream more. Um, it is a goal of mine in life to spend all of my waking hours with you with you on Twitch. Uh, but um, look at that. Alariza Fiorgia is streaming as well. I see. That's good. Nice. That's good. Uh, we, we, we love to have we love to have yet another streamer here. So there you go. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Um, thanks for thanks for sharing that, Chess Bay. Yeah. Uh, the uh, okay. We've got a lot of options here. I try to keep my eye on what's going on with the time to go to games as they may be in their most critical moment. It looks like Chess Queen. Not only is she leading, but she's also once again in complete control of another game and up on time. You know, this this is really say Faruja, 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 Faruja. I thought that's what I was saying. Faruja, thank you. Okay, shout out to Chessically Inclined. I'm not sure if you're streaming today, but I see you in the Chess.com TV chat. Shout out to Diamond Member, The Hobbit. Shout out to Platinum Member, Richard, The One. Um, New New Jersey, Greg just subscribed to the Chess.com channel here on Twitch. Appreciate that, Greg. Love the support, really. Okay. Kostinyuk is really in control in this time control. You know, the only people that I think are going to, you know, she's not going to get upset by any amateurs here like she did in Bullet, you know, where where she just wasn't quite fast enough to ever put together any real streaks. Um, it's going to take some of the top title players to slow her down here. Look for her to maybe make the knockout today. That could be fun. Speaking of top title players, the one, the only, Danya Naroditsky, is, 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 is Naroditsky streaming? Now that would be awesome if he jumped in the fray. What's up, Greg? That would be awesome. Too bad, Chessically Inclined. We love when you stream. Sorry you can't do it. Congrats on making the knockout on Monday, dude, and the bullet, and getting a win against Meyer. That's right. I saw you, baby. Good work on Monday, brah. That was strong. That was strong. Good stuff, dude. Yep. Um, Okay. So many options here, hardly enough games to go to. I like watching, I like watching Chess Queen's battle against Narodisky, so I'm going to stay right here if that's okay with all of you. Um, I will keep my eye, I'll keep my eye on some water right now. I've been feel like I've been talking like for half an hour straight with nothing to it. Do 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 do. Having fun, checking in with my uh, with my tweets, seeing if anybody is on the uh, on the old Twitter right now. Uh, a lot of games to follow. Again, so many so many streamers here. So many streamers, hardly enough time. Thank you for being here, everybody. All right. What's the most exciting game? Like I said, it would it would take a top GM to slow her down, and looks like looks like she may have run into one of those here. Daniel Naroditsky is is one of the most underrated, I think, um, blitz and bullet players on the planet. You know, you think of guys like Hansen, who stream. Obviously, there's the big dogs, Nakamura, Carlson, right? Uh, Danya did not get invited to our knockout, the the qualifier that's going down on June 26th for the Speed Chess Championship this year. Mark your calendars for that. Uh, we got Eric Hansen. We've got Georg Meyer. We've got Jan Ludwig Hammer. I can tell you that Danya was literally my first alternate. One, because I think he could win. 
he's the kind of guy if he's playing well he could beat he could beat those guys in a match in a, in a blitz and bullet match so um we see there he's rocking a nearly 2900 blitz rating and i think he will just absolutely bring the pain down right now and castinia streak is is going to come to an end uh she's down for the first time this is the first game we've seen her down right i think um Sam Shanklin, maybe he will get in. Maybe he will qualify. He can still play the open qualifier. Um, you, you're saying Nuraditsky is better than all them or Sammy? Shanky. Uh, I think Shanky is a stronger player right now than any of those that I mentioned as far as classical chess. Those who are not following Sam Shanklin wouldn't know that he just won the U.S. Championship. Of course he's killing it. He's been killing it, right? As far as Blitz and Bullet goes, though, I'm not sure that I would say that he's stronger than that group. Not than Han not not over Hansen, Meyer, or Naroditsky. Maybe maybe over Hammer, maybe over Dominguez Perez. I don't know, um, but a lot of people feel like Dominguez Perez might be the outside, you know, like uh, the the dark horse to win the whole thing. So, if you're not if you don't know what we're talking about, check it out. Check out the stream. Shout out to Lee saying Shanklin rolling. Who knows? Maybe maybe we we reach out to Sammy and try to really push him to play the qualifier. There's an open qualifier on July 10th, um, and that that will find that will. That will, like, finish up the field of 16 for this year's Beaches Championship. Uh, we do the knockout first because that way the three guys that don't win the knockout, they can still play the open qualifier and still get in, right? So if Hansen wins the qualifier, the rest of those guys still have a chance. Um, okay, she's been defending well. I mean, I, you know, she's still losing here, but shout out to Kostinyuk. I was expecting this game to be over about uh, two minutes ago. Shout out to Chess Dude. one, two, three. Thanks for being here. I agree. Chess guy two, chess sky two, chess key two, chess sky two. I agree. I'd like I'd like to see Shanklin jump in on these two. Shanklin, the prodigal son. He's been on chess.com since he was a wee pup. I recruited that kid before he was legal. Is that okay to say? I hope so. <laughs> LOL. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. The uh all right. So Meyer is working his way up. He's now in 20th place, but the top title player we see currently riding a hot streak of seven is Lenderman. So I think he deserves a bit of our love. Um, also also have, having a good pairing here, right? Looks like G-Moves just jumped in the fray, given that he's ranked 316th with zero points. I'm going to assume G-Moves hasn't lost all games today and that he just got in. Again, one of the cool things about the arena is any of you can join at any time. If some of you are sitting here like, hey, I'd like to play, just head over to Live Chess. Join the arena. Maybe uh, maybe that's not the direct link, but you can do it. Um, the uh, the, um, the the arena allows people to register for the whole time. Uh, I don't know what the legal age limit is. I assume 13, just like Twitch, just like Facebook, just like anything. You, you have to be 13 to register everywhere, everywhere on the, on the open web, as I tell my 12-year-old on a regular basis. Okay. Um, Lenderman just gonna just going to be in. Okay, he brings that rook to C8, but this is, this is really just high-quality chess by him right now. Along with Kostinyuk, and there we see the uh, the one, the only, the last samurai jumping in on on uh, on, a, on a hot streak right now with seven up out of eight total. But isn't that just a rook falling? Unless he wants a discovered. Yeah, there we go. Bishop takes check. Here we go. Bring the bishop back to e4. Rock into c2. Unless unless rook d8 is just even more powerful. Rook d8 might even be more powerful. Okay. No, he goes for bishop e4, threatening rook c2, followed by knight d3, and I believe mate town. Um, population f2 and g2 so rook c2 check if if king did d1 there would have been rook d8 uh, lenderman is is really just squeezing this one right now um, i don't want to say he's playing with his food but he's a boa constrictor who's had the option to uh to finish the job here for a little while and i, I think he can just play rook c2 and then jump in with the knight so i'm a little surprised that he's that he's uh kind of fooling around at this point but okay, he will get the win here no matter what. I think he can even run the king out this way, which is something he might do. This has just been a little bit unnecessary. Not necessarily the best strategy for an arena, by the way. I mean, you win these things by getting as many 
victories as you can. Uh, because of your ability to maintain your hot streak, the bonus points you get. So, uh, I don't know. Taking a little bit longer than he should, from my perspective. But uh, he will win this game no matter what. Lenderman will be moving uh, to, a, to a hot streak of eight. Check him out right here. He'll be, he'll be eight of eight right after this. And uh, pretty much any move wins. He does it. Lenderman is the top title player currently in the show. There's our boy Bigfoot. Number 40 with 14 points. Not bad at all. Twitch.tv slash Bigfoot. Check it out. Check it out. And uh, in the standings, right as I say, Lindemann's the top title player. Not too far behind him is, uh, is Carilla, who's on 7 of 7 today. Still hasn't lost. The thrill of Mr. Carilla might be the one leading the tournament. By the time we get to about 3,000 viewers, there's uh, almost 2,800 of you with us now. And look at that. I'm sorry, Bicky. I love you. I love the stream. Everybody go check out Bicky. But look who just got paired with Lenderman. The top two title players throwing down as it should be. Loves it, loves it, loves it. And uh, let's see what happens. I'm going to flip the board and make sure that I'm also following the count. Um, so that I can, uh, can see it from the white perspective, as most prefer. We saw this opening several times in, uh, mo on Monday, right, in the, in the Bullet Arena Kings. This is an aggressive, uh, an aggressive approach for Black to expand F5 so early just to pry open this diagonal and get tactics. It works well with the Bishop on B4 because you're undermining protection of said light squares here, right? When you get rid of this knight, you're undermining the protection of those light squares and so that the rest of your developing moves can kind of come with uh, everybody's working together. There's a purpose to your, to your moves. Right now, black can't just play knight f6. I'll show you why. If he had just played knight f6, white would have captured twice on f5 due to the pin on e6 and, uh, and then probably just started launching kind of a huge attack. So I, I think that, uh, oops, I don't want to be in the arena. No siree. I want to be following things here. Okay, Carilla is, is going to keep on the attack. What, what The balance in a game like this is positional long-term chances versus who has the initiative, right? Because white has right now kind of all the trump cards on the dark squares. And if moves like knight g5 or maybe even white castles and, and tries to get a rook to an open file and get that in the game, there is clearly the potential for white to get an attack. Carilla decides to go with knight g5. But the long-term nature of this position is that white is, is frankly positionally lost, right? These doubled isolated C pawns are just sitting ducks for moves like knight a5. And so black is sort of just parrying the threats. Knight h5 is an indirect way to defend the rook on f7, everybody, because the, uh, the queen was pinned there. Um, so the, uh, the knight was pinned to the queen, excuse me. Uh, that's why Carilla played this move. Carilla just played this move, uh, queen to e4. Okay. And uh, now he has to deal with the knight, maybe h4. g4 is interesting, right? You go all in on this attack, g4, rook takes, you take here, he takes, you back that thing up. Probably not a worthy sacrifice, because if you haven't really increased your pressure, you're down a pawn, and black still has all the positional weaknesses his heart desires. So, um, so I'm going to guess no g4, but count might be calculating something like h4 with the idea of g4. Oh, I'm wrong. Right as I say, there's no way he's playing g4. He goes for it. Well, the move order could be that if takes g5, he's going to take with tempo on the queen. But here he's really giving up all of his attackers for that exchange sacrifice that probably favors black, to be honest. Um... There's also rook f4 here to consider if you're Lenderman. And he's going to do just that. He's going to consider it, right? Taking his time. Another option, knight f6. Now he can swing the rook over to a5, get it out of harm's way. A unique position, to say the least, to see a rook in front of the pawn chain like this via the elevator here. Um, but the trend of, of how black is finding the right defensive moves makes me feel like Lenderman is, uh, is in the driver's seat here. A big potential window for Carilla. You can see their standings, everybody, right here. Number eight going into this matchup versus the number five player in the event. So, um, so certainly this is, 
This is a big game. Okay. Rook to g1, trying to keep the attack going. Very nice. There may even be weird threats on h7 with the g-file opening up. If you're Lenderman, okay, he decides to stay on the defensive. You start to get really, really nervous here. Okay, he's going to be able to get h6 in exchange for c6. The problem is, did, did Kirilla miss that his knight is hanging in the end? He might have. He may have to, I was going to say, he may have to play a move like f4 to protect the knight. At least if this knight moves, there's an immediately punishing move, queen e5 check. Mm. But that was no good, and there's no way Kirilla's happy about that. You look at the time, you look at the fact that his attack has fizzled out and he's down a piece, and Lenderman is going to be moving to a hot streak of 9 out of 9 games and, uh, and leading the event, just as he did on Monday. The difference is that on Monday it was Bullet, which I don't know is ultimately Grandmaster Lenderman's bread and butter. This time control, this time control I think is a little more his speed. And, um, okay, well, I think the count is faster. So if Lenderman puts him in a position where he can get flagged, that would be bad. Because right now, Carilla, okay, if Carilla can flag him, that's his last chance. Give checks, get jiggy, get nasty, try to make it awkward and weird, which is exactly what he's doing. And he might made him in the middle of the board. No, he had rook d1 check. No, the king would have taken here, but he does get, does get material back. He makes him in the middle of the board. Holy bleep. Seriously, that was awesome. Look at that. With no time on the clock, Gorilla launches a devastating attack. Y'all got to be crazy if you think I'm not going to take another look at that. Wow. Let's get some hype going for that. That was, that was redunk-a-dunk. That was Rebunkadunk. Look at how this game finished here. Just absolutely out of control. I mean, in this position, the game was over, and I was calling for it, right? I mean, he's down a knight. He's just down a piece. And there's not really any kind of attack here. But Lenderman goes king walking, which, you know, honestly, kind of serves him right with the chess karma, because the serious truth is that Lenderman kind of toyed with his food last game. And now he brings his king out in the middle of the board just completely unnecessary. Really, just super unnecessary. Uh, you know, after after the check, oops, no, stop it. I don't want to be in. After the, after the check, uh, you can even just put the king here, and you're still just totally winning. Get the king out of harm's way. There's no real mating that. So it doesn't make any sense. That, uh, that he would bring his king out, and Lenderman just got himself made it in the middle of the board. I'm sure that there may even have been more accurate moves for, for him at this point, but because he you know, had zero time on the clock, you can hardly begrudge him, um, and ultimately finds his king trapped on d5. Very rarely you say that, finds the king trapped on d5, smothered by his own teammates. So, All right. Brilliant win, and a huge, a huge shakeup in the standings, because we were on route... Right, we were on route to say that Lenderman would be leading here, um, but with Carilla winning, he is now the last remaining undefeated title player, and gonna get a pairing that rewards him for that. Frankly, right now he's gonna play play down, and uh, should get this win. Could be moving to nine of nine. If you're not following him, uh, go ahead and do so. Mr. Carilla is streaming his own thought process right now, including an innovative. A really, really, uh, I believe, pretty, pretty sexy and innovative uh, way to do that with his with his mouse, with his mouse shot. There he is, right there. Go check him out. Stick with me if you want. We've got the official coverage here for the better part of the next pretty much two plus hours for the Arena Kings today. But uh, there he is with the mouse and uh, and rocking it right now. Currently on pace to move to nine of nine. So, good for him. Good for him. Checking out the chat. Thanks to all of you who are who are here. Leela03, Diamond member over there on Chess TV chat. Blunders away wins. Thanks for being here. Sam loves when Danny is creeping on the streamers, right? Just saying, I'm just creeping, just staying back, not engaging on the chat. I wonder if they know that I'm creeping on them. 
creep on all the streamers. Uh, DeFore says if the if the system is based on is not necessarily wait if it's based on ratings and not score then it doesn't make sense that the playoffs are one versus eight two versus seven I'm not really sure that that's true um, it's plus the you're you're assuming the the full algorithm is based only on rating it's not it's an algorithm that is designed to take into account all factors uh, rating standings and um uh, and frankly how long somebody's been waiting before their next game so you know i don't want to get into too much of that but we you know we're doing our best like i said to provide the the most fun mario kart chess experience anybody can win so that wouldn't be fair to say that it's just rating anyway so that is how i will answer that then i shall move back to the main analysis here and see if the count is going to put yet a yet another one away bump Bump, bump. Another one bites the dust. Bump, bump, bump. Another one bites the dust. Get the knight to e3. Get the bishop to d5. And then go take the knight. Uh. Bump, bump, bump. Another one bites the dust. Play bishop d5. What are you, what are you doing, Carilla? Okay, knight g4 is also good. That's what he's thinking about. But I very much like this bishop to d5 move. What a nice. Um, not exactly sure what uh, what Christian's calculating here, to be honest with you. Um, the uh, the knight is pinned. Okay, he just wants to go for a safe move. Okay. Okay. Going to play c6. Going to bring the lady back. No, you got to guard b a7, but then there's going to be discoveries with the knight. I feel like he made this a little bit harder on himself than he needed to. If I'm totally honest. I think the person we got to start following is right here. Uh, this guy. Because he's also streaming. In Polish, I believe. If you speak... If you speak of the Poles. Ski. Uh, Queen takes d4. No, he comes back. Again, Christian should be winning this game. Still up on time. But he has not made this easy for himself at all. I mean, seriously, the, the, the approach he started taking with knight d5 was a little bit of a play-it-safe approach earlier, which is not how he's going to be consistently converting things anyway. And, he, and he's going to still be in the best position to win this game, but, but he made that a lot harder than it needed to be. Um, and now he's, now he's facing the pre-move attack. My favorite opening, the pre-move assault. Okay, if he's going to trade everything there, he should be winning the king and pawn ending. And uh, we'll see if he does just that. Okay, b5, no. The, the other guy's pre-moving on a much faster rate. We knew he was going to go for the double pawn sack. The count was ready. And Carilla continues to be a thriller. And I continue to play that one up as long as I can. So let's go ahead and check out this game here between uh, David. How do I pronounce this one? For those of you who are wondering... Um, that he, he is a streamer, and like I said, he's, uh, he's actually pretty entertaining. I, I've enjoyed some of his clips, despite not understanding a word he's saying. So uh, consider following him. Can we, can we share his link in the chat for those who want to follow him? And uh, just Dawid, okay, just Dawid, okay. Dawid is about to go down here, though, to Stewie Griffin. I think he's finally running up against his match. I don't know exactly what Stewie's thinking about, but this check looks pretty delicious. Check, rook g2, check here. If rook f2, then rook, then rook here. Okay. So taking his time, Mr. Griffin is and should still be completely winning. But I think the check on g1 was slightly more forcing. What is he doing? Okay, just check and it's over. It's mate. Okay, then rook g1. Rook g1. Okay. And uh, all right. Black is, black is putting this one away. And it looks like the, uh, the streamer... The overall leader of all the streamers, hashtag rhyme time, was, uh, was the first, was, was the last one standing with a full streak going. He got to all the way to 11 before losing. So uh, he does go down. We'll keep an eye on him, though, because it doesn't mean he's no longer amongst the leaders. Uh, and uh, we see a lot of title players creeping up, creeping up the standings. So many games, so many games to cover. Let's pick our flavor. How's the German Super GM doing? Mr. Meyer. 
I feel like Jorg Meyer could could be a bad guy in a Die Hard movie. Can we get a can we get a close up shot of Meyer? Right? Let's um let's let's bring up Jorg Meyer's stream. You know what I mean? I mean I feel like he could be the bad guy in a Die Hard film. He's got that like intellectual bad guy thing going, right? And if you hear him talk, he sounds a little bit like Hans Gruber. Okay? So, um, you know, he's currently streaming, you know, from a Windows 95 laptop with a connection that requires two people to hold up telephone poles on both ends. So he's not necessarily rocking the cleanest stream, but I will say that Meyer is uh, is rocking one of the best, the best um, wannabe diehard bad guy looks. So for all of you, all of you who are just getting here, thanks for being here. We've got 3,000 of you on Twitch and Chess.com TV. And uh, appreciate the presence of every single one of you. All right. We are rocking and having a blast. Meyer wins and uh, immediately starts his next game. I should move my water out of the shell. All right. Who else? Who else is rolling? Lenderman continues to be amongst the top, but Chess Queen, she's bounced back, huh? The count on nine of nine, but he's playing hammer. I didn't even realize that. That's a tough pairing, right? When you're trying to rock yourself to an Arena Kings victory, no one wants to no one wants to have the hammer brought down. Twitch.tv slash GMJLH. Check him out. What's up, Richard, in the Chess TV chat? Suyan. Everybody, thanks for being here. Okay. The Count needs to win this game in order to stay atop the standing. So at this point, I think we have to be rooting for the leader over the Norwegian Super GM. Okay. White seems a little bit better, honestly, and he's also up a little bit on time. Uh, but this knight on e4 is a stud, a beast, if you will. Brings the other knight in to poke on d4. That's a problem, actually. Maybe I jumped the gun thinking that white was a little better. Perhaps not at all. He has to play rook d3. I'm not sure what Hammer's thinking about. But the longer he does, the more you like black's chances. He does eventually go for d3, and now we see the relocation of the knight, trying to remove white's strongest piece on the board. Best strategy, if you have equal advantages, eliminate your opponent's advantage so that yours is the last one standing. White tries to prevent that, brings the other knight into capture, which was the right move. I'm looking for c5 at some point. No. Now look for the queen to move. Oh, I thought he would move the queen and try to sacrifice the exchange, but he might be doing it with this rook. And Hammer beats him to it. Sacrificing a rook for the knight there, totally, totally what you would expect, and an instructive point for all those members watching who may not do that immediately, right? That knight was more powerful than any other piece, and both sides got rid of their the opponent's knight happily. We should be headed to a theoretical draw, but with only 15 seconds for Hammer, if he tries to win this, he could lose on time. I'm going to make a bold prediction that Black wins this game. Despite the fact that White is up the pawn in the rook ending, I think Carilla is that much faster, and I think that he'll catch Hammer in some awkward pre-moves. Unless it's a draw, I think that Hammer's going to lose this game here, especially after Rook check and King over. Amazing just to know that in Bullet, the more likely you are to win based on the fact that... Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Now Hammer's put on the pre-move juice. Pre-move juice, it's happening. Both sides have four seconds. Somebody's going to lose on time, and it's not going to be pretty. Somebody's going to lose on time. Somebody's going to get a queen with checks, and just like that... Hammer's in big trouble, and he loses the game. The count continues to roll. Carilla playing like a thriller. Look at that. Look at that. He's now at 10 of 10, the top title player. 
uh, where's he at? Where's he at? There he is. Number five, the top title player, not the top streamer, because Dawid is actually the top streamer right now who did finally have his hot streak end, but Carilla has still not lost today. So congratulations to him um, as I move over to the standings and show everybody exactly what I'm talking about. Carilla sitting at number five with a hot streak of 10. Adoption, that's right. There's the chess bra emote there, the, uh, the, ch the chess bra flag. Um, I did wash my shirt. I know what you're thinking. Danny, you're wearing the same shirt as Monday. It wasn't yesterday. It was Monday, okay, for the record. When you have as many kids as I do, you do laundry is a constant process. It's always evolving. It, it never ends. There is no end in sight. In fact, it teaches you. Honestly, you evolve spiritually because you just realize what the Buddhists were talking about, right? It's just about going with the flow. Be a feather because literally you can't win against your children or against laundry, period, ever. So I wash my clothes on a regular basis, like more than regular. Like I would want, you know, m much more than you ever thought about washing your clothes times it by 10. That's how often I wash my clothes. Um, any hooters. Okay. Um, Carilla continuing to roll. We moved on to Stewie Griffin, but the truth is I have a hard time not wanting to just follow Carilla. He gets, he gets a pairing that's definitely helpful for him. Here's a pairing that favored probably uh, the, uh, their, their position in the standings a little more than the fact that uh, Carilla was much higher, higher rated here. He's going to get a win and likely move to 11 out of 11, just guessing on the strength, and really continue to put himself in a great position to win the, win the event today. With only an hour left, um, you, look, you really like for the count to improve his chances. He did not make the knockout. Remember, at the end of today's event, so at precisely 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, the top eight players in the standings, the top eight streamers in the standings will move on to a knockout where we will seed them one through eight based on their finishing in the event and pair them off in some epic knockout matches and, uh, and the party continues. That's what they're competing for today with a lot more prize money and a lot more uh, pride, I guess. Not, not just prize money, pride. Uh, really points in the standings, right? Every are Royal Arena Kings you see there on the schedule is, uh, is what defines the format here to be a little, a little bit more challenging. As we said, there's more money on the line. Um, and also a lot more Grand Prix points to try to qualify yourself into the Streamers Championship. So there you go. For those of you who were not aware of the format, back that lady up. Trade those queens, Count. Don't think about it again. Ah, no, he wants more. He wants the whole thing here. I guess it makes sense because if the queen moves off of G4, look for F4 to punch through, right? The only reason Kirilla wasn't playing F4 uh, before is because queen would take G4 with check. So now F4 is coming and the attack is going to continue, even if he chooses to save the knight first. I think, I think all things are possible here. I think Carilla is in a pretty good position. Even I was just going to say, even this move, followed by knight E4. Yeah, I didn't get to that one before he did it. But knight F6 not only threatens knight E4, also knight F3 check, which would have been winning the queen. So here comes knight E4 now, because queen G5, frankly, didn't do anything. Um, Unless he has 92 check. Oh, he has 92. Is there going to be a crazy mate? I, I want to watch Carilla's stream. There's, okay, he almost could have played 94 first, though. He took. Then he takes. And rook h8. Followed by rook takes h4. That's why you do your tactics, kids. Right there. That's pattern recognition at its best. Man, Carilla is bringing it today. Seriously. I'm impressed. This is as well as we've seen him play in any arena. He's 11 out of 11. Wowzers. Seriously. And putting, putting, throwing out punches and putting people away. Right? That was awesome. I was looking for a mate with the knight on G3, right? For those of you who are uh, wondering what I was talking about. I, I was looking for a different pattern. But he, he found the pattern on the H file. I was looking for something that involved, like here bringing the knight in and the queen moves, and you actually you actually made on g3 with the queen guarding the square rather than the rook, okay? So, uh, yes, his pattern was different than the one I was calling for, but I think that black was in control regardless of the path he took, and the count has already moved on to his next victim. Just, just crushing it right now. Okay, so who's going to catch the count? Who is going to catch Carilla? That's going to be the question. We've got chess queen sitting here at number six in the standings. Also doing well. XK foe, I, I would love to win it all. 
right? Unfortunately, I'm not playing, so that's, you know, that's an issue. Uh, Jackie the Swede, what's up, dog? Showing up. Checking out who is in my chat. Love you all. Um, I should have answered the question when uh, when Viv, Vivian777 asked about my shirt. Um, I should have answered the question with, yeah, I've been streaming straight for 48 hours and I still haven't changed. Look how good I look, right? No, but I didn't. Um, Danny can win without playing. I'm like the Chuck Norris of chess streaming, right? Like Chuck Norris wins chess arenas without playing in them. Queen's Night Out. How's it going? Thanks for being here in the Chess TV chat. Thanks to all of our subscribers, all of our Diamond members, all of you who are with us, everybody with us. Thank you. I'm doing okay, Jackie. I'm working on my sleep, as you said, trying to get those bags out from under my eyes so I don't look 50 anymore, as you've told me. Um, Rook G7. Okay, this also works. She's going to bring it to the back door. Black has to give up the Rook for the Bishop in order to avoid said checkmate. But unfortunately, it's not going to be enough to avoid a defeat here. Um, what would I do if I was the chess queen? Probably rook f6, first and foremost, just to stop the f-pawn. And then I'd bring the rook over to b7 and b8. Quite possible that she just plays rook b7, because even on f2, rook b8 gets a queen. Black takes with check. Um, ooh, this is also nice, because on king f8, then she plays rook b7, and f2 eventually allows rook f6 check. So the king goes to h8 to avoid that. Now she goes to f6, so sort of, she, sort of, she sort of gained... I sort of was tongue twisted there. She sort of gained a mini tempo. Now she can get back to this rook b7, rook b8 idea that I've been that I've been calling for. Here it comes, rook b8, shake and bake, and I helped. Mama, chess mama queen, she gets her win, and uh, and she continues to be amongst the leaders. But look who's look who's coming up, the one who's leading the overall standings. If you've been following season one of our first Arena Kings Streamers Championship. Georg Meyer has been the man. Twitch.tv slash Georg Meyer. He's leading it all. Um, and only barely lost Monday's event to Andrew Tang, the one and only Penguin GM who played in the Bullet event on Monday. Um, and it was like 3 a.m. for Georg in Germany. So look for Georg to be there in the end. The count is still, you know, just, just knocking them out. They're down for the count here. And, um, and okay. I'm going to have to be careful to get a cramp. I got a cramp at the end of yesterday's show, for those of you who watch. Who is the best player in the world, and do they play online stream? You have Magnus Carlsen, Fabiano Caruana, Hikaru Nakamura. All of them have Twitch channels, and they've all streamed. Matt, you've seen Magnus streaming at Lee Chess. You've seen Magnus stream on Chess.com. So there you go. If you're following people, do it. Front page viewer here, but you're already a Twitch Prime sub, so that's nice. Thanks for being here. Thanks to everybody who is here. And uh, shout out to the Chess TV chat as well. Crazy summer dance says he's going to be looted. You are going to get muted. If you don't, if you don't change the subject, the mute is coming your way. So be be appropriate. There you go. The, uh, ooh, we've got a time scramble here. This is one where he's favored, but he's down. Cryptol is hanging in there against Carilla. Okay, Black's King is wide open, but that's ex an excellent idea. Get the Queens off the board and you won't get mated. This could be it, guys. This could be it. Guys and gals, Carilla might be falling unexpectedly, frankly, to a much lower rated player. Though here comes the here comes the pre-moves. Here comes the time scramble. We'll see who's faster with the mouse. Um, I would have played H3 first. He didn't. Now he's going to have to take. Oh, but he gets B4. That was his idea. So still, I'm going to guess that with time on the clock, Black... Black shouldn't lose, but no. Okay, maybe he will. I mean, Carilla is that much faster. Um, and it looks like Black is going to have to deal with the B-Pawn first. He probably, right now, what Black is doing is a mistake. He's trying to play too many good chess moves. 
Um, the, ma the mouse cam will reveal a mouse smash soon if he loses on time, yeah. Um, oh, he gets the queen, but black gets a queen first. He's down on time. That was a huge mistake. Right? Never play with queens when perpetual check is on the line. Never mess with a Sicilian. He's pre-moving his king with only two seconds. It's not going to be enough, and he's going to lose. The count, the count streak has come to an end. I think he just misplayed that too. Just like trying, trying too hard in the rook ending, going for the queen ending. I mean, I would have, I would have been looking to flag my lower-rated opponent uh, much earlier in that setting. So, okay. Either way, uh, Carilla remains amongst the leaders. His streak does finally come to an end, which means the last uh, or you know, there's, there's a couple of streaks of six. Let's bounce into the last Samurai stream and, uh, and see how he's doing here, given that uh, we haven't given him too much love today. He is currently at number three. So, hello, I'm Zane. I'm not exactly sure what your ears are, but yeah, if you're, uh, if you're, if you're watching Carilla's stream right now, I'm curious what he just did. Clip it for me. I'd love to see it. Um, yeah, he... Uh, he can get aggressive. Not necessarily Eric Hansen style, right? Like throw your chair and perform for the peeps, you know, but, uh, but he can get aggressive there. Acrid Leaf. I'm not playing. This is a tournament that I'm providing coverage for. Um, not exactly sure where Lady Wolf is today. Probably working on something outside of the chat. He smashed his mouse and then ran out the door to get water. And, uh, well, we saw Tang, right? Tang won on Monday, taking a break at about the midway point. So he took five minutes off, roughly, against my advice or what I keep saying on the show, that generally you want to play as much as you can. But obviously, winning, maintaining your winning streak is really the most important for points. And Andrew knew he needed a break, and so he used it. Um, and he, of course, ended up making the knockout where, uh, where he was able eventually to beat Georg Meyer in the final. So, so if, uh, if anybody needs a water break, I think they should take it. Samurai in control here against his 2,400 opponent. Is mu he's uh, much higher rated. You want to do something against the king here. But the problem is if you ever push to 5, e5 is just immediately undermined. So, so Samurai doesn't go for it. I don't think that's true, Noble Wizard, and I think it's a question a lot of uh, new players ask, and the reason is that there are principles that define what will get you the best chess position and the most active pieces that therefore lead to the most powerful options, and options lead to tactics, and so there are principles that define what will lead to a good position that go way beyond opening theory and whether a beginner is predictable. Um, and, and so I think that it's a common misunderstood thing that a lot of top players are just playing off memorization or genius calculation rather than pattern recognition, you know, strategic understanding that goes beyond that particular game. They've had positions similar to it before. So to be honest, like nothing could be further from the truth. Um, top players crush beginners. Um, in fact, even more than any other sport like poker or something where, you know, there's so much more luck involved that a beginner could get a few great hands in a row. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's much more of a black and white scientific affair. So speaking of scientific affairs, Samurai just got surgical against uh, his opponent there. But one person who we haven't gone over yet is Lawrence Trent. Mr. Trent now sitting at nine, sitting with 12 and a half out of 14 total and a hot streak of nine. Let's give Lawrence some love because we know that he also has a Twitch channel of his own. He's currently streaming. Pretty sure I could find that one for you guys, if you'd like me to. Uh, what is it? It's uh, twitch.tv slash Trent OSK, something like that. If I'm going from memory here, got to agree to his, his inappropriate stream. But he's not on. He is playing. Okay, he is on. There he goes. There he goes. Mr. Trent, rocking it, rolling it. And doing well. Nine in a row, guys. 
Just had to mute him. Nine in a row, indeed. A pro StarCraft player will destroy you so much harder than a pro chess player. I don't. I can't speak to that. I'm not a professional StarCraft player. Um, raw meat delivery. Maybe you're right. But if you're just trying to engage in the debate, uh, somebody who's a pro at both would have to answer. Fun fact, actually, our co-founder, Jay, Chess.com's co-founder, um, was like the first unofficial StarCraft world champion in one of the first eSport events in Korea he played in long, long ago. With He, had, he got like a big check for $5,000 or something. <laughs> like it was, it was crazy, so... So, funny, funny stuff. Um, Lawrence Trent, he's on nine in a row, nine in a row, like he said, and he should win this one too. To be honest, he should. Queen check, maybe, ooh, no, not e4. e4 would allow rook takes f5, and then there would be no check to win the rook. So Trent has to be careful here. But you want to get e4. You want to get the bishop on this diagonal to do some stuff here. But white's attack is, is, is just as dangerous right now as, as anything black has. So, uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for all of our subscribers, all of our premium members, all of our supporters, everybody tuning in today. I play people on chess.com all the time. Crazy summer dance. Um, no, that's not true. I don't play as often as I would like. Bishop d6, a nice move. e4 is an official threat because even though it blocks the queen and would allow rook takes f5, that's a bigger problem. So, so now, international master Ario has to figure this out. Here comes e4 with check, I'm guessing, to win the exchange. The rook will have to move to either g3 or f4. Um, should be able to just take on g3 and honestly uh even stronger actually there was this there was this idea of the queen sort of inchworming her way in for a checkmate but this is a bigger problem and i think trent's gonna move to 10 in a row after this fascinating stuff we get to witness the checkmate bishop takes g3 bro <laughs> <laughs> Trent just missed the checkmate and won. I don't even know what he was doing there, but he does he does get the win eventually. His opponent resigns. Um, so that was uh that was funny. And he immediately gets paired with Spinal Tap. That's Mr. Tom Bartell. Pretty pretty awesome dude there. But uh yeah, for those of you who don't know about your prime capabilities, yeah, consider subscribing to us with Twitch Prime. Super easy. Literally, like the easy, almost as easy as Amazon Prime itself. So, um, the uh, okay, a lot of options. We see a lot of these top title players working their way toward the top over this two hour arena, and uh, it's going to be really fun to see which of them would hold on and move into our knockout round. Currently, of all those streaming, the top eight would be well, let's move over to the uh to the to the big standings and see who the top eight would be we'll keep an eye on Lawrence Trent's game there above me um, but if if the knockout were to start this second the top eight people would be last seven samurai Dawid Lawrence Trent chess queen Carilla Georg Meyer and then I think Lenderman and maybe UNC 07 is UNC 07 streaming I think I think he does stream He's done a lot of shows. Diamond member, we love UNC 07. I'm assuming he graduated in 07 from UNC. You know, probably a big Duke fan, big Blue Devils fan, right? Um, but uh, those would be our top eight streamers as far as I know, moving into the knockout. So that would be a lot of fun. But of course, we'll keep an eye on... Oh, Riyadamon is streaming. Okay. Mr. Sam Copeland. UNC 07 doesn't stream. Okay. Thank you for that tip there, Sam. So Riyadamon would actually be in, UNC07 would not. 
Gambit, Gambit Orator, just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much. Love the Twitch Prime support. Let's get that Twitch Prime sub going viral. I got to start moving my coffee off of this Mr. Coffee heat pad here because uh, it's getting real hot. Plus, not really like I need any more Joe. Um, <laughs> Riyadamon is streaming a camera behind his a camera behind his chair. It's like IRL. <laughs> That's I don't know why I find that so funny. Uh, that that is funny. Um, okay. Back to the analysis where Trent continues to roll forward. Hope you're all having a great time here. Thanks for being here. Yeah, Trent is on a roll, man. He's better here, too, against Bartel, but Bar Bartel is tough. This is a Berlin structure. Interesting, right? Normally you see the knight and bishop in different spots, but that's what happens in this particular theoretical line. Probably white needs to start looking to double on the e-file. That's where the eventual you know, climax shall be reached here on E5. Something's going to happen there. Um, Black is going to look to relocate and maybe use the D4 square, but has to be very careful. Okay, he's going to go for it. Here comes the Knight F5. Uh, <clears throat> getting involved, as I said he would, but Knight G4. It's a strong move. Strong move, I think. Now bring the other Knight into E5 and look for an attack. No, he takes. Is he going to take h6? Is that his idea? You nasty. You dirty dog, Trent, if you take h6. That's what he's thinking about, I guarantee you. Knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes. He immediately threatens the rook lift, which would be game over, Red Rover. Okay, he plays rookie four first, but now he's going to allow bishop takes here. So that was, that was less than ideal if you really think that you have winning chances in this game, to be honest. Bishop takes g4. Yeah, just, I don't know why he took so long to play it. He had to play it. Uh, I think he's going to actually have to, he doesn't even have a chance to get d4. So that, that was misplayed by Lawrence there. That was misplayed. Um, sadly. Now the rook ending really is doing just fine for black. You have to be careful with a move like king f1, but he offers a draw. Uh, his hot streak will, will not be quite as hot, right? It's kind of like throwing water on the fire, right? Not going to put it out, but it doesn't help, you know? Uh, actually, it does put it out. I'm kidding. That's actually like putting out the fire, literally. So that was a bad draw. <laughs> and it's funny because it's not that it's, it's not the worst in terms of the result. But when it comes to the arena format, what everybody has to understand is losing that game is like the same as drawing it. Like, serious, forget the rating points, right? Because if you lose, your hot streak ends. But if you draw, your hot streak ends, right? And really, you get, uh, you get to the top of the standings here by putting together streaks and earning yourself bonus points. And so, um, you know, that's, just, that's why i just not really in favor of the way that was approached. I would have rather played Knight H6 from a practical perspective. You want to go for the attack. It's just not the best arena strategy when you're racing against the overall 37 minutes remaining and you need to keep streaks alive. Now he has to start a new streak to work up to the bonus points that he was getting with every victory. Meanwhile, last samurai streak remains pretty hot. Chess queen, she's rebuilding a streak of her own. Alexandra Kostinyuk. The count, the count not down for the count. Georg Meyer also right there, but not rocking a streak of any kind to speak of. Although Lenderman is right behind him and is rocking a streak. So, so many, so many places to go. So many options. Trying to take a look at, at uh, which games I think might be the most interesting to bounce to. This one with Lenderman doesn't have a lot of time left, but it's kind of a boring rook ending. But we'll check in on it no matter what. I hear you, Vivian, 777. Um, that's a good point. Time is a factor, but when, when you're rocking a streak that high, I don't think so. I don't think, I think the streak has to outweigh your thought that I don't want to spend another couple of minutes on this game because it's going to cost him bonus points. And also it was more the match approach. Like if it was the time factor too, then again, it comes back to, he probably should have launched the attack more aggressively 
with knight takes h6. So that that's that's all I'm saying. Um, you know, but again, easy for me to say being in this spot, right? But I think that that's uh, that was my point. All right, so this one's still kind of a boring draw, although I expect Lenderman to win it mainly due to time. This one is not so much a boring draw. Georgmeier might actually win because of the pieces on the board. Brings the bishop back. He has the knight to e2 check. No, he just wants to go after b4. Makes sense. Now you also have e5 and e4, and he does it right away. Here it comes. No. Doesn't play e4 because knight f4 check would have been an issue. Brings the king in first. Now e4 is just that much stronger. The knight will have to move. B4 is eventually going to fall, but only after H4 and Meyer's putting on, putting on that good old-fashioned German technique right now. Putting on the the uh, the technique. So B4 is played. He's going to trade. That's a lot of pawns. Um, a lot of pawns. Only 11 seconds though. So Meyer needs to. Needs to do it quickly, right? Needs to get the job done quickly or he's going to regret it. That's a nice way to finish it off because there's no way to stop e2 and e1. Even brings in the knight to make sure that he can stay close to the black king. That's a nice way to play queen d2 check. Now you can pre-move queen takes. Queen b3, queen b5 mate. I said it first, Georg. Take that. All right. So Meyer does pull it off with only four seconds left. And... Um, and so he's continuing to try to get himself back near the top, the tippy top. I haven't checked out Samurai's stream too much. What's, what's Samurai's stream? Can we share his, uh, his stream in the Twitch chat? I'll go creeping on his stream and see how he's doing. Um, currently, he's taken on um, Ario, again, sitting at the number two spot. The bonus points work by the more wins you get in a row. So that, that and that's separate from the way the the pairings work. It's just based on how hot are you playing, right? Um, and the the pairing algorithm is based both on ratings and standings, not necessarily favoring either one. But because you want to get games as quickly as possible, often people get games against their peers, and so that makes for much more equal matches in every game, and 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 honestly, exciting games right from the start because we have title players playing each other the whole time. So. Um, but uh, anyway, that's that's a quick summary of how it works. Chess Queen is streaming. So is that is that his stream right there? JJ Chess 2018? Somehow that doesn't sound like Samurai's stream. Though I appreciate you sharing the link. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is. I will uh, I will take your word for it and go open up open up his stream if that's what you're saying. Uh yep. Yeah, you're right, it is. My bad. Sorry. I don't know why it is, why I didn't think it was. But he's got 20 viewers and now cr climbing because I just popped over there with a few other people maybe. Uh, but Ali Morandi is uh, doing well, playing well, right there near the top, as he usually is. I love his background, right? I love his, I love his background. Like, he's got, some, he's got some urns there behind him, right? Jamil Jean. Jamil Jan? Jamil Jan. Got it. JJ. That's what I'm going to call him from now on. I love it. Thank you, Sam, for the tip there. Arnibo31. I see you, baby. He's back in Turkey with the ambiance. Back in Turkey with the ambiance. And he just got a new follower as we all sort of tune into his chat. That's pretty cool. 31 viewers. He's gaining viewers because because uh, we just jumped over to him. He looks like he's streaming from a museum. <laughs> it's true. It's like Indiana Jones is going to come up and try to grab that relic any second, right? Yeah, that's funny. That is funny. All right. Only 31 minutes. Pretty funny stuff. After breaking my left leg and left arm, I heard you're all right now. Glad to hear it. 
Not sure where you heard that, but yeah, I mean. Um, I'm going to put the coffee away now. Putting the coffee away. Sup? Cy Rob2804. Red Deer, if you, if you want the answer to that question, you just have to uh, use your brain. But if you ask it again, I'm going to mute you because you're, you're abusing the chat. That's right. Behave yourself. Um, what do we got here? What do we got? We've got Samurai. I'm looking at the other games. Looking at the other games. Yeah, Samurai is really in the best position right now. Chess Queen is, is at 55, a 16 out of 18. Um, only a slightly worse overall percentage, right? Carilla working his way back up, but it looks like Samurai is just going to take care of business on E2. You can even take with the Rook here, which is fun. Because if Rook C8, JJ just brings the Rook back to E8 with Discover Check, which is a blasty McBlasterson. Every, not every day you get to allow a back rank uh, tactic and and still be crushing for it. The uh, there he goes and he finishes the job. That's a lot of fun. A nice nice tactic. All righty, Rudy Tootie fresh and fruity. Samurai looks like he's going to be moving on again. JJ lost in three straight games to Andrew Tang on Monday, but okay, Tang probably the best. Non Magnus Carlson, Hikaru Nakamura, bullet player on the planet. Is that true? Who's better than Tang at bullet? Who's not Magnus or Hikaru? I mean, actually, I don't know that that's really fair as we move on to Lenderman because, again, I think guys like, okay, Meyer was playing at 3 a.m., and Tang doesn't spend all his time playing guys. You know, there's that whole tier of players that don't have to be Nakamura or Carlson, like Naroditsky, like Jorg Meyer. I mean, we see them in the Speech Chess Championship, right? Wesley So, Anish Giri, Grishuk. Those guys don't play as much bullet as a guy like Tang does, but I would wonder, I would wonder, you know. Anyway, but uh, yeah, so JJ, JJ made the knockout on Monday, but he did, he did lose. We'll see if he can have a better, a better go of it today because in the next 30 minutes, there's no way he's not going to finish as one of the top players. That is faux show, Bofa show. Okay, Meyer also trying to keep himself in that position. Yet another Rook ending, um, F4. Okay, he's going to sit and play a little tickle, which makes sense. Your opponent only has 12 seconds. Don't do anything silly, right? Um, there's no reason to change a structure when your opponent is living off the increment unless you're going to repeat the position, right? You don't want them to get a draw. But that's just like good bullet blitz time scramble strategy, right? Don't make things easy for your opponent. Try to make them awkward and weird and, uh, and keep, it, keep it hard for them to just pre-move. Because you can see the point seconds, right? He went from 8.7 to 7.8. The point is, he's putting... Look at, look at the time, right? If somebody only loses point 0.1, that means they pre-moved, right? Because you, you lose a minimum of point 0.1. But the truth is, um, if you put yourself in a position... Like right there, he was able to pre-move because he captured and then was able to go from 3.1 to 3.0. But if you put your opponent in a position where they can't pre-move, you're just you know, going to be in a much stronger uh, position of strength heading into the time scramble. And that's exactly what Meyer did here. Puts on a clinic for all of us and takes this one home. Okay, Alexander Kostinyuk now playing Jan Ludwig Hammer in a weird looking night ending. What in the world, baby girl? No idea. No idea what's happening here. So. Did he really, Chess Bay? I didn't know that. JJ won the last tournament on ICC when he when he had that. That's interesting. <laughs> how does uh, how does Opon Oponnet know all these know all these uh, secret acronyms? Um, don't worry about it, Red Deer. But you're not going to get an answer to that, or you already know the answer to it. Just not something I'm going to go into. A lot of other things you could grill me about as far as cheating goes and what people say. That's not necessarily true if you want to on TV, and I'm not going to answer you because I don't have to, um, and wouldn't be wise. So yeah, don't don't appreciate that. Don't go into it just because you know. Anyway, um, but um, 
So you're saying, so how, I don't know how OpenNet knows. I'm not confirming or denying that Danya's secret account is Dr. Tancredi. But I think at this point it's kind of known, right? Anyway, <laughs> so um, I don't think so. I wouldn't, I wouldn't rank Tang ahead until he plays like that group of like 27, 30 GMs who don't play Bullet that much. Like, what, you know, who would he beat? Because remember, in like a speed chess championship, when you add increment and the strength of chess is that much more important, Right? If okay, just mouse speed bullet, who knows? But as far as like, you know, playing bullet chess, you know, I don't know. All right, but I do know that Hammer is putting on the works here. Unfortunately, Kostinjik is gonna go down. Unless he blunders a stalemate, he does not. Hammer brings the goods. Yeah, everyone knows he's Rebecca Harris on Lee Chess, and that's cool. So, but uh but yeah. All right, well, all 3,000 of you that are with us now, thanks for being here. We are getting down to the final 25 minutes here in the, uh, in the Arena Kings, the Royal event today. So don't go anywhere if you're just getting here. It, the top eight players will move into a knockout where eight people will battle for everything. And uh, I know, Timothy, we're, we're, we're going to work on helping Meyer improve his setup provide him with some assistance as they say so yeah he, he needs to improve his setup the uh main thing here is that the knockout is going to begin and eight players will be battling for all the extra bonus points this is more than just a regular arena everybody it's got this awesome qualifier that people get into for extra cash and extra extra koosh we'll call the grand free points koosh cash and koosh right it sounds like a uh, sounds like a uh like a good 70s cop show, Cash and Koosh, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, Meyer, Meyer currently time traveling, streaming from 2002. Very funny. Um, but he is winning a lot of chess games. So regardless of how he looks streaming, he's pretty darn good at doing it and playing good chess. You see these top players, you know, just really getting bunched up here at the top of the standings. The only non-title player who is streaming is Riyadamon, who, does this guy even count? Should we tell this guy he's got to put his face on camera? What's his Twitch channel? Can someone throw me his Twitch channel? I'd love to see what Riyadamon looks like right now on, on Twitch. Um, I'm not going to repeat it again, Hagu Chess. I'm not going to say who, uh, who Dr. Trangridi is. Um, okay, Bigfoot. Bigfoot rocking it. Okay, so we know that coming down to these last few matchups, though, we want to keep an eye on who's able to pull away uh, from the top players. I think the biggest one here between Kavalenko and, uh, and Carilla, who has thrilled us, right, doing the thriller. Can he do the thriller dance? I'll ask him about that next time I see him in, in St. Louis if he you know, works on his Michael Jackson. Dun, dun. Right? I can do the thriller. We did it for a talent show. Um, dun, dun. Anyway, Riadamon. Twitch.tv slash Riadamon. I'm going to go ahead and head over there, root a boot now, and see what this guy looks like. Let's do it, everybody. Let's go creep in. Come on, everybody. Creep with me. Let's go check out what Riadamon looks like. Doesn't look like he's got... Okay, so I guess he's got himself... <laughs> What's that? That's an unopened Christmas present from 1995 right there. That's an outdated map of the world. We'll take that. That's cool. Um, he's uh, playing on chess.com. That much is confirmed, right? I guess this is a good security pose, right? He's confirming to us that he's not cheating in any way by his stream, but that's cool, right? And maybe he got in a fight last night, just doesn't want to show his eyes on camera, right? Um, but uh, yeah, see you later. See you later, Snake Mayor. Thanks for being here, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate the love. Appreciate your support and the positive energy, man. Uh, this camera angle is known as the Riadamon. Like you've heard of the, um, you heard of the uh, Macarena, right? Or or Gangnam, Gangnam style, right? This is the Riadamon. There you go. Answers given to you as far as exactly what this is. John Bartholomew looks like he's the second place stream right now. Our channel rocking three thousand of you. Thanks for being here. John Bartholomew's got 265. Look at that sexy cat. Look at that beard. Look at that. John, John, uh, John went crispy with it. He must be updating his Tinder profile. The, uh, 
<laughs> I really got to be put on a leash. Somebody has to put me on a leash or it's just not going to stop. Prime007, subscribing with the Twitch Prime. I should get a few more Twitch Prime subs for that Tinder reference, I think. Isn't that like in the, in the, in like when you signed up on Twitch? Like if that happens in a chess show? Anyway, Bartholomew. Bartholomew not amongst the top standings players, but is looking darn, is looking darn sexy. And there he goes. He delivers the mate. We get to catch that on camera. Nice. And like we said, he is in second place right now as far as total viewers in the stream. Hammer. Hammer's in third place as far as the chess category goes here. There he is. Look at that. Still wearing his sexy suit. He's still wearing... Look at that. Chess Bay. Timed out somebody. I don't even know why you timed him out, but thank you, Chess Bay, for uh, protecting humanity. Um, shout out to the last Twitch sub from a username that ends in 123456. Appreciate that. Um, but uh, there we go. There's Hammer. Hammer is rocking it, working it. Hammer's going to be moving into the... Uh, no, he's not. He started too late. He's in 70th place. So Hammer really playing just for the kicks and gigs, for the fans, for his followers. We love that guy. But again, he's looking damn sexy, and that's because he was just doing the official commentary on TV2, which is one of the biggest uh, private, privately owned, I can tell you, not NRK, privately owned stations in Norway. And TV2 does excellent chess coverage. So Hammer doing some chess coverage for TV2. And, uh, and that's why he looks so darn delicioso, Dora. So, all right, let's move back to the games that we be following. Thank you to everybody who's here. We be following these games. We be following them closely. Jorg Meyer in a time scramble. This time, going to be on the wrong side of things because there's no way he wins this and deals with the time scramble. So his streak of three, not a long-lived streak, is going to be coming to an end. Um, I guess we should probably check out Mr. Riyadamon's uh, games, huh? Let's follow that guy. Who's he playing? There he is right here. Riyadamon is up on time, so maybe he's a fast player. Currently, he is doing okay, maybe? Interesting, just takes on d4 to guard c2. Okay. True to true, true to true. True to true, true to true. There's a lot of other people streaming. Wow. A lot of other people streaming. An ADHD stream, apparently. Is that what's going on here? Yeah, I've been bouncing around a little bit, enjoying, enjoying the uh, the amount the amount of options we have. UNC07 in 14th place, diamond member in the chess TV chat. Oh, Riyadamon plundering his queen. Down, down, down. Red Knight's gonna be going down here. And uh, okay, he thought he was mated, but okay, he's gonna resign quickly. And get back on it. Apparently, Rose one 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 is also streaming. Huh. Awesome. Wow. We've got we've got a crazy amount of streamers here. All right, Jorg Meyer in tenth place, trying to make sure he's able to move on into our knockout. In the next fifteen or so minutes, we're going to know who the top eight are. And after a very quick break, where all of you get to get some refreshments. Um, we're going to be providing commentary of the top players from the day as they compete for really big bonus points in our streamers championship. So pretty cool stuff. Again, some of our favorite streamers, guys like Bigfoot, doing work, having a great stream. You should check them out, but not necessarily amongst the leaders. Lenderman, no longer in the top 10. Oh, he is number eight, um, but... Uh, but should be, should be getting a win here. He's about to crush this guy. This is a battery, and that's a problem. Let's see how he defends it. I don't think he can. G3 loses the knight. The only, the only option would be rook takes to delay the inevitable, but then the pawn takes, and you're back to square one. Um, so I think Lenderman is about to bring down the hammer for us here. No pun intended, given that Jan Ludwig Hammer is streaming.
Bigfoot does have the best music. I agree with that. I often I often worry that he uses music that isn't necessarily open source. But what do I know? You know. Um, but uh, no, he is he he. I think Bigfoot and I would be besties if we could hang out more. You know, I, I dig I dig Bigfoot's music. I'm not gonna lie. The chest bra music is is cool if you're into that sort of weird bump bump bump. You get in the club, you start dancing, you start dancing. If you're into that sort of like weird, I'm not even going to use the term, whatever, then the chess bra music is for you. You know? Um, okay, Lenderman taking his time here, trying to decide if there's a queen d3, 92 mate. There is not, and he doesn't want to give up the bishop. So, uh... <laughs> the, uh... Okay, bring the bishop back then. I'm getting criticism for calling the chess bra music weird, which just makes me even happier. Um, all right, the knight's coming into d3, and that should do the trick. But white will try to flip the script with a battery on the h-file. Unfortunately, oh, he should have, though. Should have. Should have, would have, could have? Should have, would have, could have. If you move the king to a dark square, you're going to have to deal with a discovered check. But now there's knight b4, and problems to follow? Yeah. Then queen d3 and knight c2 is mate. And if the king goes to a dark square, bishop into f4 allows black to choose his flavor. Knight c6 guards the bishop. And uh, I saw it first, Alex, followed by mate and bake to come soon. Or maybe he'll just win the queen on b4 with bishop takes. Yeah. Okay, so Lenderman gets material. He's going to continue to be in the top in the standings. Samurai, JJ. Rocking a 13-game winning streak right now, but unlucky number 13. Will it be? No. Looks like he's he's favored in this game here. So uh, JJ is uh, is in a is in a phenomenal position to be the overall um, title player. But Rose 111 also streaming. Can we get his link? I don't know who Misha Osipov is. So that's the answer to that. Apparently, I don't follow that closely. Um, who is Rose11111? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Hello, I'm Zane. Doesn't like the chess bra music either. I don't know that it's a zero out of 10, but there he is. Kiss Cat. Kiss Cat. All right, cool. So many streamers, hardly enough time. Hardly enough time. That's awesome. Sweetness. All right, well, let's see Samurai really clinch himself. Because at this point, if Samurai gets this win, moving to a streak of 14, that's going to put him at, what, 75 points? 75, 76 points. I forget what the bonus is up to now. But, uh, oh, wait, but he's not going to get the win. How is he just, how did that happen? Interesting. Unknown phenomena. Living, living up to his or her name, whoever that is. Um, but uh, so if, if Samurai falls here, okay, so maybe, maybe I spoke too soon. No, 12 points over Chess Queen and Trent. That's not really something you can make up in, in 12 minutes, you know. So uh, too much for that. For some reason, for some reason, I'm getting pinged with a private chat by a staff member. But I'll move it away so you guys all don't have to see it. Whatever, whatever Sam is trying to tell me privately. Um, all right. Looks like uh, Samurai is going to go down. Still going to be the top title player, though. Okay, thanks guys. Getting set up. Getting set up for the knockout. There we go. Every time you start a new chat, it shows on screen for a second, apparently because that's the default position for a chat. So uh, be aware of that in case you're going to tell me any sensitive info. You know, the stuff we talk about alone, you know, all that stuff. Um, yes, the playoffs will be starting the moment it's over. 
you know, within reason, there's going to be a couple minute break while we get set up, confirm to you who all the qualified players are, and then uh, get get the party started. So, yep, and uh, gonna be gonna be a lot of fun to get that thing going. Yeah, behind the closed doors of chess.com after hours, when the gloves come off or get put on, depending. The uh, all right, Bishop d5. He actually has created somehow. Samurai actually created a mess out of this situation, which he had really no business doing. A very nice move from Phenomena. Going to finish the job here. What? How did he just do that? Rook check was a skewer, and it was over. And now, now Rook check here wins. Oh my gosh. What a crazy finish of crazy pre-moves with neither side doing anything worthy of note. <laughs> all white is doing is pre-moving and all black is going to do is the same. Interesting stuff. I like it. I like it. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Chess Bay gifting a tier one sub to Gotham Chess. Appreciate it, Chess Bay. That's 51 for you, Chess Bay. Amazing. It's over, though. Samurai, it does eventually fall in the most unpredictable fashion. Not how you expected him to lose that game. Um, but uh, either way, his streak does end at 13. And we see a lot of other title players were able to catch up to him in the process. So uh, interesting stuff. Let's check in on Rose1111, that streamer over at twitch.tv slash kisscad. Gets a draw against Lawrence Trent, who's also going to be moving on into the knockout. The eight-player knockout, most likely, at this point. So if we move over to the big standings, um, you know, keeping our eye on the fact that there's a, there's a lot of interesting games going on, where do we want to go? We'll take it over to Georg Meyer's position and bounce over here. If we check out the standings right now, we've, uh, we've got a quick preview of who our most likely top eight streamers are. Rose, one, 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 one. Last Seven Samurai, Chess Queen, Riadamon, all the top players are streaming. Lenderman, Trent, The Count, and then uh, Dawit. That means Georg is on the outside looking in for the first time in his belief in life. Seriously. I'm shocked. Um, I guess it's possible that that changes in the last few moments. Now we really have some drama here. Let's pay close attention. Georg Meyer leading the season. Uh, Simon or Sam, if you could share a link to the, the, the season one of the Arena Kings leaderboard so people can check it out. Georg Meyer is the overall leader in the Arena Kings season one uh, with $15,000 in prizes, if you didn't know. Um, so that, that would be a huge, that would be a huge upset. He has to leapfrog several people here in order to get in. Uh, so we're going to follow Georg Meyer's games closely as well as the Count and Dawid and, uh, and see what happens here because this is, this is, is going to be quite the drama. Thank you, Chess Bay. Um, I should have assumed you're right. Okay, Meyer's going to get this one here, which is huge. He's got to get this win, move to 58 points. Overall, 59 points, and he is right there. We are, we are looking at, you know, Carilla, who's been nothing but a thriller, and Carilla was the one who we were kind of like calling our shots, saying, how can he not win the whole thing, right? He started out just on fire, but he has since struggled uh, to get the same mojo going. Um, and um, and that, could be, that could be huge if he, if he goes on the outside looking in or, instead of uh, Meyer. Okay. Georg Meyer gets a, gets a favorable pairing. One that he should be able to work into a victory. Carilla is in the similar a similar spot though, against a much lower rated opponent, but not necessarily a huge edge at this time. Um, okay, this is going to be a tough one to win. If I had to call it right now, I'd say Meyer looks like he's ready to leapfrog Carilla. Dawid against in a tough game right now against Casper, who's also streaming by the way, also speaking Polish, also from Poland. Look at that. This is a Polish-on-Polish Polish battle here. The PG kind. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, Stretch town. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Ah, cramp. Oh. Whew. Okay. 
So, um, yeah. Shout out, Peter. Thank you for the sub. Appreciate it. That's a tier one sub, not even a Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate the love and the support. The twitch.tv slash chess chat is lit, as the cool kids say. And the chess.com TV chat is pretty lit as well. Thank you, everybody. Glad you're here. Okay, Dawid is on the bubble. We've got three players on the bubble right now. Georg Meyer, Christian Carilla, and Dawid. Um, and again, I, I'm not trying to pronounce his last name because I just don't want to look like more than an idiot than I already am. <laughs> anyway, uh, take h6, buddy. What are you thinking about? There you go. Put the bishop on g5 and drive Harry home. Take him to Hogwarts. Put the rook on d4. Do it quickly. Then put the bishop on g5. Then take Harry to Hogwarts here. Um, okay, e4 is falling, though. So David is in a, is in a phenomenal spot. To win this game, keep uh, keep his chances. He's going to move, I think, to 62 points if he gets this one. This was not the right transition, though. With only a minute left, he literally just put himself in an obstacle with bishop ending that is going to be super tough to win. So he's going to lose a ton of time on the clock. That was a wrong practical move, if I don't say so. Now g4 works because the bishop can't take rookie four check with a fork. So he doesn't go for that, but he can put the bishop on f4. Block the rook's protection. Okay, e3, also trying to work a principle of two weaknesses. Use the rook and bishop together on this side of the board. Okay, he, he's, in the, he's in a position where he should win. And now with three pawns, actually four pawns extra, because the c-pawn is a lot of action as well. Okay, his opponent just throws in the towel. Maybe that's Polish love there, right? I, I don't know what kind of Polish love you're, you're into, right? Not the platonic kind, though. That's what I'm saying. Um, all right, well, uh, hammer versus chess queen, also a big one. Not necessarily for hammer, but chess queen, the one and only Alexander Kostinik that we started with is in position to be the last title player standing here, really. So she's crushing it. Crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. Um, crushing it, crushing it, country, crushing it. Now I got, uh, this is America. Contraband, contraband, contraband. <laughs> Now I got, uh, now I got This Is America in my head. This is, this is the chess.com streamers tournament. Rose, Rose and a bunch of ones is in a phenomenal position. Getting decent pairings. Let's check out who this person is. What was it again? Twitch.tv slash KissCad? I think so. Let's do it. Let's go check out twitch.tv, twitch.tv slash kisscad. Let's go, let's go creep together, shall we? Let's creep. Let's bring him some viewers. Rose and a whole bunch of ones rocking from a, a weird... Looks like probably like a mini laptop setting, just based on the format I'm seeing. Looks like he's uh, playing well, though. Playing well. 21 viewers currently. We'll give him a good follow there. Sup from chess.com. That's right. Hey, everybody. There he goes. He's in another position to win. That means our leader, probably going to continue to be our leader here. Right there at the top. I mean, at this point, he's 20 points ahead of the nearest person, Kostinyuk, despite her hot streak of five. So there we go. Okay. But she hasn't, she hasn't gotten out of this battle right now. Oh! Wow! She just brought the pain to Hammer. Hammer's probably getting a drink or something because there ain't no other choice but Bishop H2 and Bob's your uncle right now. So uh, phenomenal, phenomenal game here for Kostinyuk. Hammer is uh, taking his sweet time, apparently. Not sure if that's good or bad. 
but uh, at this point, I don't think she finishes another game anyway. So I'm getting pretty much ready to call who our top eight are going to be. With only a minute left, who is on the bubble? Bubble, bubble, bubble. Meyer got in. Meyer jumped up. Who's fallen? The count. The count is down for the count, and he's got a huge, oh, he's got a tough pairing against Kabalenko. An absolute must win here for Christian Carrilla. And honestly, it may not be enough even if he does it. But there we go. Another leapfrog happens with Meyer, Trent. The count. This is literally just going to come down to who gets the last win. Because when the clock runs out, that carriage turns back into a pumpkin, Cinderella. Don't be out past midnight. That's all we're saying. You know? Um, this is amazing. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I don't think Carrillo is going to win in time. I think Meyer's going to sneak in. 20 seconds left. 20 seconds left. Queen G4 check. There you go. Got to get another check here, unless you just mated yourself. Queen F4 check. You could even sack on H6 if you wanted to, but not going to be enough. Now you take C6, deliver another check on C4, okay? F3 is the flavor you choose, and that's it. The game's over. Kabalenko holds on long enough to deny Carilla his second knockout. I'm not sure what he's doing on stream right now, but I bet it's getting weird. OMG. OMG. Seriously. Wow, wow, wow. So where does that put us? Currently, my team is going to work on bringing everybody together as far as who the top eight are. I'm going to show you what that looks like based on who I know is streaming at this time. The knockout is going to be beginning in just a moment. Super heartbreaking finish for Carilla. I'm, you know, if you had told me an hour ago that he was going to be on the outside looking in, I would have slapped you silly. Okay, just absolute bananas that Carilla and Lawrence Trent and. Okay, so the one, the one wild card is is Patracio uh, streaming. If I had to guess, the answer is no, which means the top eight is going to be everybody else and end at Dawid right there. Dawid would be the last one getting in. So my staff is going to figure out whether I'm right about that, whether Petrosio is a, is a dark horse streamer that we didn't know had his lights on, lights, camera, action, or whether the top eight are going to be the rest you see, starting with Rose, Kostinyuk, JJ. Um, actually, Super Nodar, is he streaming? He might not be streaming. That Wait. No, that would mean Trent gets in. Still, Carilla wouldn't get in. Amazing. Trent can't play? You're telling us that Trent can play. Well, I'm going to let my staff figure this out. Nobody go anywhere because we don't know what's going to happen. All we know is that we're about to have uh, a ton of action in regards to the knockout event. We are deciding who the eight players will be that you see in this format right here. Uh, and we will be back in just a moment to let you know who that is.
This has been fun, reading the chat and all of the uh, letting the conspiracy theories fly. Well, the, uh, the, one, the one person who may be playing himself out of the running is Rose1111 right now because he, uh, he's been playing his own games, which has not allowed us to pair him um, and force the pairing that he needs to have as part of the uh, knockout event. So if, he is, uh, if he's not able to stop these games, he may be forfeited. But we're going to focus on the games that allow us to provide commentary, about who is going to win the Arena Kings knockout. And let's start with Chess Queen taking on Dawid. Now, unlike the bullet event where we started each match after the other because it's really hard to commentate on multiple bullet games at once, from the blitz perspective when we have the knockout, all matches will start at the same time. So, in this case, indeed we have... Uh, we have no. We don't have. We don't have uh, Bigfoot. What we have is Lenderman and Meyer. They are in the knockout. Um, <clears throat> surprised by that. So I'm not exactly sure who the final eight were to get in. Perhaps, perhaps Rose one 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 withdrew himself. Um, so interesting. We'll see. Um, we uh, we wouldn't want you to wait six hours for the knockout, Vivian. It is underway. Um, and uh, let me let me see who who was the final eight, so that we can tell all of you. Obviously, we will have the updated bracket for you, showing you exactly who they all are, uh, which is updated, I believe, actually at this time. There we go. So what we have here is uh, the full list of those who qualified, with the only confusing. Uh, thing being the uh, the pairing potentially between Rose one 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 and Carilla, as long as Rose aborts the other game, there should be a possibility for him or her to play. Not exactly sure who Rose is, and it looks like all has been taken care of, and we now have all four matches started. Carilla taken on Rose, pretty big mismatch here, but Rose having played well so far, why not keep playing well, right? Forrest Gump style, keep it going. So all four matches are going. Again, for those of you who are just joining us, this is the Arena King Streamers Championship. After a long two-hour blitz arena with some amazing chess by a bunch of amazing players, we had eight of them moving into the final knockout stage, which means that they will play until we have an overall winner in order to get much bigger prizes and um, much more Grand Prix points to get to qualify their way into the Streamers Championship. So... Uh, the bracket is exactly as you see it here with Kostinyuk right there as the two seed, Rose 1111, the newbie, new one, newcomer here, not somebody we saw coming, newcomer, cucumber, but a tough pairing with Carilla. Lenderman and Meyer, the GM on GM action, the only GM on GM battle happening in the first round. JJ, that's Last Samurai 7 there, JJ Chess 2018, and Riotamon, they're rounding out the bracket in a 3 to 6 matchup there in the corner. So that's it. Not going to talk too much more about the standings because we got chess to analyze. There's a lot of you still with us. Thanks for being here. And, uh, and let's do it. Okay. So, again, Carilla is, um, right now I'm kind of shocked. I'm not exactly sure who is streaming from Rose 111. We need to figure out who this, who this anonymous person is right now, right? Um, because right now he's uh, bringing the heat to Carilla, to be totally honest, and, uh, and up a minute on him. So we're going to have to figure out who this person is, right? The mystery man or woman. Going to be fun. All right. You can find Rose111 at twitch.tv slash kisscat. <laughs> right now he's just dominating Carilla. I wonder if we have a GM, a GM secretly playing from some sort of anonymous channel, looking, looking to find a, uh, find a way into the top of the, of the Arena King Streamers Championship. We will find out who this person is. Don't you worry. Uh, and it will, be, it will be fun, hopefully. Um,
Well, Rose dominates Carilla to start. And a bunch of other ones are about to finish, though. Chess Queen is going to take down Dawid with a huge edge on the clock and just crushing here with this extra A pawn. All right, let's focus on the GM on GM action here because uh, Last Seven Samurai took care of Riyadamon pretty handily. So this is really the one... Okay, not true, right? Because Rose 111 um, is... Uh, is currently the one surprising everybody. But uh, this one here, who's winning? It looks like Lenderman is actually on the better side of a rook ending. No. No, potentially not. I wondered if there was a way to actually trade on c6 and then play king d6, but Meyer chose not to go for that and instead force... Okay, I thought if king takes d3, we'd see rook takes d5. The rook comes back to guard the pawn instead. Lenderman does maintain an edge. But who will be better in the time scramble? This one's probably going to come down to who's better on the clock. That's just the honest truth. So, with five seconds extra, now seven seconds, looks like Lenderman is going to take this one. Would be, again, another exhausting affair for Meyer, right? Given that it's, uh, it's later in Germany than it is in New York for Alex. Uh, but, you know... Meyer doesn't want excuses, but he doesn't want to get his rook chapped either. Rook f4 would have allowed king e3, so he has to give up the h-pawn. Now Lenderman really should be winning pretty easily here. So uh, that was a nice little nice little finish there by Lenderman to play f3 and invite the rook trap. Here he can hide his king from checks. Nothing that Meyer can really do. Um, and uh, he's just going down. Down, down, down. Meyer's going down. Lenderman jumps out to a lead there. Uh, here we have... The, uh, the next set of games immediately getting underway. Meyer and Lenderman. Last Seven Samurai already playing his games against Ryadamon. Uh, and about to win the match. This is actually the third game. So JJ seems to have gotten the most favorable pairing. Um, as, uh, as we noted, we have got Chess Queen also taking on Dawid. That next game hasn't started, I don't believe. That next game has, there we go. Now that game is underway. And the last matchup that hasn't started yet would be the second game between Carilla and our anonymous, our anonymous, uh, our anonymous clearly very, very strong, no audio streamer. That's right. So these are the people that are playing in the final. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Those are the people, and I'm uh, I'm trying to choose who do we want to continue to follow right now. Okay, so Samurai is going to be moving on. In fact, I went to the bracket there to see if it was already updated. It wasn't, but we will see that uh, JJ has already won his matchup. You can see where to follow him on Twitch next time we show the bracket. So he's moving on to the next round, for sure. We still haven't had the next matchup between Carilla and our uh, masked assailant, who apparently, I've just been told, is streaming with no audio, which can't really be legal as far as the format of the event. So uh, we're going to have to figure that out. I'm actually going to review the rules right away, because if it's not in there that audio is required, it will be added immediately. Because uh, I think that our, our masked assailant, who is playing cleanly, we can tell you that, because of uh, what we're analyzing all the time, uh, at least as far as we know right now. But uh, not necessarily playing fairly, because the Streamers Championship is supposed to be streaming with commentary. So we're going to find out who this person is. Oh, there is audio. Okay. We'll figure that out. We'll figure out what's going on. I just want to know who it is, because I want to know if it's a Grandmaster or who it is. Somebody who can beat who can beat uh, Carilla that handily has got to be a super strong player. Yeah. We're not putting you in, Bigfoot. We love you, though. Thanks for being in the chat. The audio is just his stream with no commentary, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, so we're going to find out who this person is. We're going to out this person, and likely they are not going to be getting any points unless they want to uh, reveal themselves. So as far as those of you who are worried, um, we, will, we will be taking care of this issue. And he might be listening to me right now, so he might know that the jig is up very soon. But not really a legal, a legal way to work your way into the top of the standings, but uh, we, we will clarify that in the rules. So don't you worry about it. <laughs> Bigfoot subs unite. Very good. All right. Yeah, too bad we didn't get Lawrence Trent in the finals. He played great, but I'm glad we got Carilla in. And uh, David Scherf. That's how I say the pronunciation of Alexander Kostinyuk's opponent. Good to know. Okay. Meyer going to get revenge here against Lenderman. Pretty required here. Pretty required here or this match is over. Over. Okay. So, as we said, the bracket should be showing that uh, Mr... JJ has already moved on with a 3-0 sweep over Riyadamon. He is waiting the winner between Kostinyuk and Dawid, David Scherf. Uh, Scherf, I believe. David Scherf. Working on my Polish pronunciation, Polish names. Not something I know. I mean, I feel like I'm very good with Slavic names, Russian names. I mean, a lot of Eastern European names, but not Polish. Okay, the next game between Kirilla and our masked assailant is underway. Uh, here we have a Berlin, pretty straightforward setup. Uh, a small edge for Carilla, given that his four on three is a better pawn structure than Rose's, but still uh, very interesting. This is fun, actually. I know a lot of people get worried about the drama. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the fact that people care enough to jump in these events, play anonymously, and keep their identity hidden. Sherv. David Sherv. David Scherf. I sound like that YouTube video. We say, how to pronounce this David Scherf, right? Uncle Sasha's not here today. I don't know where he is. He's out. He's out right now. All right. Uh, the, uh, the matchup between Kostinyuk and David Scherf is, is in a must-win situation already for the young Polish man. Uh, Kostinyuk doing well, as we said she would in the 3 format, right? Early on in today's event, we were saying this is really her speed. This is really where she's going to thrive. And the same with Lenderman, who once again is, okay, he was up on, he is up on time, but he's not winning on, on the board. Um, F7, C2, both sides get a queen. No. Okay, even better. Meyer blocks it and will get a queen himself. Should be able to win this position, even with only 10 seconds. Shouldn't be too hard. Now he can already sort of pre-move his way to a victory if he's able to do it. He should be trying to do it. Looks like he's getting down on the clock, though. If Meyer's hardware wasn't the worst hardware on the planet, he might be doing a lot better in some of these scenarios. <laughs> if he wasn't streaming from 1995, Meyer might, uh, Meyer might be in a better position. But here he goes. Finally works it. Works it. Pushes that king to the edge of the board and brings his match versus, uh, versus Lenderman to an all-even score. Okay, so this one remains super close. Uh, the games between Carilla and Rose, our anonymous assailant, our masked, our masked streamer with no audio. Okay, so our, our masked streamer is getting outplayed currently by Carilla, who's, you know, we know he's rocking one of the coolest setups and coolest streams with, I think, the only mouse view on the planet. You know, I got two webcams in my setup. I wonder if I could do the same. The problem is no one wants to see my mouse. I've got this weird standing desk. It'd be weird. You might see other things. You know, I don't know. Um, okay, but Carilla's in a position where he shouldn't lose this one. And uh, the link to the person playing Carilla is twitch.tv slash K-I-S-K-A-D. And... Uh, in order for him to be eligible for any prizes or to be eligible for any future things, he must confirm his identity, at least to chess.com, and begin providing audio in a stream. So that's definitely a part of the rules, and if the language wasn't clear enough, we're going to have to make it so. So uh, streaming is, is a requirement, and we consider audio a part of the stream. So there you go. 
He streams sniping. Nice. It's uh, I'm not I'm not that short. I'm just shy of six feet, five eleven, five eleven and a half. If you want to if you want to uh, count that, I think I'm about six feet with shoes on actually. Um, but uh, I am short in patience, and <laughs> I am short of uh, time. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, the standing desk is awesome. It goes up and down and all around. You can go from sitting to standing. It's pretty ba. Um, whenever Gior gets a phone call, his stream freezes. His neighbor gets a phone call. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Um, okay, David Chirv, David Chirv, David Chirv <laughs> is uh, up against the gun against Kostinyuk. She can go gobbling already. No reason not to. Okay, nice shot to try to undermine and create counterplay, but White should still be in the driver's seat here. Okay, this works too because C4 can be met with A4, which protects the pawn. Um, now black is going to have to hold on to it with rook d4, but that puts Kostinyuk in the driver's seat with the a pawn marching up the board. It's a good move. I don't know if it was totally necessary. Ah, but it was interesting. She was trying to stop rook d5. So now she'll go for a... a uh, she's going to try to have her cake and eat it too here. She wants to win all the pawns, um, but she's not going to get it. So it should be a drawn rook ending, which would be interesting. The real, the real thing here is it looks like us sort of being aware of, of the situation between Rose, our, our, our mass streamer, and Kirilla. Maybe that got in Rose's head a little bit. Who knows? Because he finally lost a game, um, this time to Kirilla, uh, in that long Berlin ending, where Kirilla played exceptionally well. I mean, that was, that was a very nice game. So he'd have to keep that up if he was going to continue uh, to beat Rose, who at this point has been one of the best, you know, the strongest players in the tournament. Yeah. All right. I don't even know where to go here. Okay, now White back to being much better here against Carilla. Going to perform surgery on the E file. E7 is backward and can't advance without the French having a say on Passant. Yeah. It seems that way, chess pots or bris. So it seems that way. Um, all right. I want to stay focused on this Lenderman Meyer match because, regardless of what's happening in the other battles, um, short of Rose being some like you know top fifteen player in the world, which I would just highly doubt, given that a lot of those guys are busy in Norway, um, I would still say that Meyer, if he gets past Lenderman, is the favor to win the whole thing, right? So this is going to be an interesting situation where if Lenderman upsets Meyer, that takes, you know, our only really north of 2,700 GM out of it. Um, so this matchup right here, obviously right now, White in a, in a very good position here against Carilla. Already, if Bishop takes G2, he's just going to take D7 instead. Now he takes B7 up. A, uh, no, he's not up because G5 falls. Okay. Okay. So actually Carilla holding his own here with two pieces potentially for the rook. I miscalculated that. Probably you want to keep the queens on the board, though. Not sure what diagonal you choose, because this lady is popping into b7. If you traded, the c-file would have been phenomenal for black. So, um, although perhaps there was a chance to trade and bring a bishop into c5, I don't know. Now is going to have to bank on counterplay here, um, while white just wins every pawn and their cousin over there on the queen side. Okay. But Meyer, Meyer and Carilla, uh, sorry, Meyer and Lenderman are still in a super tight battle where once again Lenderman is up a little bit on the clock. That 3 0 time control really is his jam. Um, so um, gaining, gaining the extra time on the clock has been a big reason why Lenderman won that last game when he was white and, and why he may win this game here. A lot of pre moves going to have to happen here if you're Meyer. He is better in the rook ending, but no increment on the clock is, uh, is a totally different experience than when the chess moves can ultimately be the most important thing. Oh, wow. 
now he can get the rook behind the pawn. That was kind of a big mistake by Lenderman. I was surprised by that. He's up on time though now. Somehow Lenderman has been the one making less pre-moves. Doesn't seem like the best match strategy. Now Myers get oh, you know what? Myers playing the uh the, the king tickle there. Good old fashioned family fun there, playing tickle with the king. And that actually prevented Lenderman from getting all the pre moves that he really needed. And uh that's probably gonna make him lose here as Le Meyer gets a queen, goes on the attack, gonna go to Sacktown, I think, and then just win with the extra rook. Uh should be pretty simple now. I'm not sure what he's doing. Now he just needs to pre move. Indeed he does, and Meyer puts himself in a position to win the match versus Lenderman. So this is huge, right? Now Meyer gets the white pieces, still the strongest player in the event, but Carilla really bringing it here. Carilla, Carilla bouncing back. What does Christian look like here? I mean, I would like to stream snipe, but all these games are so exciting that I don't want to leave for too long. I'm just curious. I'm just curious how Christian, how Christian's feeling right now. You know? How Christian's feeling right now. This is how he's feeling. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love that second webcam too. One of my favorite things. He's rocking it. Okay. Brings the rook back. Now he's got knight of three check as well as pushing the e pawn. going to bring the rook over to h5. Rose taking a think. Here comes the rook into f2. Also f3 is threatened. Queen to f3 check. Stops it now, but maybe queen f5 inchworms her way in anyway. Knight g4. Also good enough, I believe, to do the deed. And Carilla, he's a uh, He's rallying here, right? It's unnerving to play someone who's anonymous. It just is, right? In the world we live in, everybody gets nervous. They get frustrated, right? So Carilla really pulled that one together and puts himself in a position to move to the next round. So uh, a huge win there for Carilla. They immediately start their next battle. Jorg Meyer and Lenderman also involved in their game three. We did not follow the end of the match between Kostinyuk and uh, David Scherf as closely. As, uh, as I, we could have there, uh, these other two matchups, just that much more. It feels like double GM action here in these other two matchups, even though we don't know who Rose is. Feels like double GM. So we've been really focused over here, but Kostinyuk and Last Seven Samurai, JJ, have already moved on. So don't go anywhere. We still have probably at least another half hour, if not 45 minutes, of, of intense chess here. I'm nervous. I just, you know, I get nervous when someone's anonymous anonymously playing, right? Because everybody's like, what's going on here? Who is this guy, right? People start crying wolf, screaming Magnus, you know? Rose won't equals the Rosen brothers. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Value detector saying Meyer quote on quote of the stream. He doesn't like to do too much commentary because his games are so intense, requires his focus. If you like his stream, it's because you like Hans Gruber references or people that look like, you know, German bad guys from Die Hard and people that don't commentate while they ruthlessly win chess games. So that's what Meyer's stream is all about. Uh, yeah, twist ending. Rose is Danny Wrench. Pew! Right? You know what I'm talking about? Twist ending. Um, so, uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, the, the, we are updating our bracket by each game. I'll try to keep, keep people up to date. But right now, Lenderman is up against it against Meyer. And, you know, as... Those of you who uh, were watching the show on Monday, you know I already kind of said that you know this is a really tough matchup for Lenderman, who also was eliminated in the knockout by, by the same German here, right? Lenderman has had a tough go of it because Meyer plays chess a lot like Alex Lenderman, just better than Alex Lenderman, at, you know, just at that even higher level. So, you know, they both have a very technical, I don't want to say boring at all, but a very, very positional, very technical, very, uh, you know, blunder-free chess style high-level chess being played. 
And um, when someone's doing the same type of style at just a slightly higher level, sometimes it's even harder than someone who's maybe clearly better but plays a totally different style. Maybe you get lucky on that day, the games go your way where you're comfortable. But, you know, this is going to be a tough matchup for Lenderman. Okay, he's doing okay though right now. And the other big game, of course, between Carrilla and Rose is still going down right now. Carrilla once again with an edge though. As we said, he seems to have rebounded. Seems to feel uh, a little bit less unnerved by who he's playing. And it seems to be outplaying Rose right now. Um, yeah. Well, Meyer Savage is a lot of people, okay? <laughs> Rose equals Trump. Yeah, who is Rose 1111? That's a good meme, right? Who is John Galt? Who is Rose 1111? The first ever clean, you know, as we, we spent a lot of time, you know, measuring things all the time behind the scenes. Clean, high level, but completely anonymous chess streamer. So, pretty fun stuff. Yeah, I didn't say it was boring. I corrected myself. That's not what I said. I was I, I, I and I compared Meyer to Karyak and you know yet uh, on Monday when I said that that's the same reason why Georg lost to Meyer. I was saying it's not the type of you know they have. There's a reason why Meyer reaches a ton of rook endings, okay? Because he squeezes small advantages in a ruthless technical fashion. It's brilliant, um, and uh, and I think Lenderman likes to win chess games in the same way. It's not risk it to get the biscuit kind of chess. That's what I'm saying. And uh, now Meyer is once again in the driver's seat, going to take, going to push a7, queen d4. Oh, that was a mouse slip. They're both just mouse slipping, and Meyer wins by resignation. That is not a fun way to end this game. Uh, you know, he mouse slips not playing queen a1, and he had already pre-moved queen b7. So Lenderman simply throws in the towel. Meyer is immediately moving on to the next round. He will face the winner between Rose... 11-11, and Christian Carrilla. Right now, Carrilla is looking like he's in the driver's seat, up a game in the match, and doing quite well here. But only 26 seconds on the clock makes that a little bit unnerving if you're rooting for uh, the Krilla, the Thrilla, the Thrilla Mr. Carrilla. Um, okay. Bishop f1, a5, here comes the bishop into b5, but that rook is going to go for counterplay. Very nice move by Christian, putting the bishop on d7, just putting the clamp on counterplay, especially with e6 coming. Uh, okay, he takes f5 first. Still, e6 is a super strong threat, opens up the bishop to go after g7. Um, time is of the essence, though. The time scramble is what it's going to come down to. I'm, I, who's going to be faster here? Only six seconds left for Carrilla. Hardly any time to speak of. There's going to be another pre-move. Pre-moves all over the place. Rose looks like he may just be that much faster, but he hangs his rook. Is he going to be able to mate him in time? He's going to get a queen. He has to be a mate, or Rose wins on time, and he does. Oh, my gosh. Okay. It's not over yet. Rose gets the white pieces again. Our, uh, our anonymous streamer continues the fight in a completely lost position against Carrilla here. Obviously, completely lost. I would have said the only other thing to do would have been to pre-move all the checks possible. But okay, I think Carrilla was probably going down on time anyway with point eight. Lenderman already starting some other games, even though he's been knocked out. We're not going to follow Alex. We're going to follow this game right here. And uh, the la that is the last one, of course, between these two players, unless they draw. Then we go to the Armageddon game, which will truly be the last one. A dirty flag by Rose, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, love, I love the conspiracy theories. Who is John Galt? Who is Rose 1111? Yeah, who knows? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for Rose, if he's going to continue, he will have... He will have to play uh, by our rules, and uh, we, will, we will no longer have the same mystery in future shows. But this is fun, and who knows, maybe it will be the last time. Maybe legit in future, in future times we have other top GMs who secretly put this whole thing together and want to do it. But clearly, Rose is not a 2300 chess player. 
clearly playing chess at a much higher level, whoever he, she is. So our bracket is updated. Georg Meyer did move on, beating Alex Lenderman by a score of 3-1. to one. Right now it's all coming down to the game five between Carrilla and Rose. So this is it. This is it for all the marbles, all the stuff, all the shenanigans, all the bees, knees, all the stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. Well, don't go anywhere. There may be a small break between this and the round of four, but then all four of the, uh, uh, sorry, all four of the players, I think both semifinals matches start right away, although I am, I'm checking in with my team now. That's why you see the, uh, the old fingers typing as we watch this game where Rose is maybe getting his rook trapped on D6. Huh. That's right. Twitch.tv slash KissCad. That's right. Um, checking in on the format here. Alexandra Kostinyuk asking us if the games will start automatically. We will start them automatically for you if you're listening, Alexandra. Okay. All right. All games start right away. All four matches. Okay. Rose is down the exchange, but getting counterplay. Carilla really feels like he picked it up. What we know about Rose is this. If you look at Rose's game history, played a lot of bug house on the site. Possibly at a pretty high level, right? So clearly somebody who's a strong variance player. And uh, that's one of the things where we, we, uh, we see there, which is kind of fun, intriguing. The mystery continues. Huh? 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 Right? So um, we'll see if the bug house... Oh, Christian blunders! He blunders with rookie seven. OMG, back in a hugely frustrating spot. Not fun at all with only 40 seconds left and no longer, no longer winning up the exchange. I think Rose is going to move on. Wow. Wow. Mm. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking for Christian there. <gasps> what? They just agreed to a draw? With Perpetual? We get an Armageddon game. Oh my gosh. We are in for everything we could ever ask for today. It's Armageddon, people. I guess the deep on was just out of control and White had no choice. And the game starts, but it starts with the incorrect time control. <laughs> Uh, this is not supposed to count. Uh, we have to figure this out. We'll have to figure out if we can force a board. The, arm the rules are as follows here, okay? If and when they get into a final, if the match is still tied after five games, they're supposed to play a Armageddon game. Five minutes for white, three minutes for black, and uh, that's what we're going to see right now. You can see the rules here. We have aborted the game. The players are so excited and nervous and anxious, they just simply started the game on their own. But we will be uh, starting the next game momentarily. And uh, why are they continuing to rematch? Okay, no, they're not. There we go. White, indeed. Uh, White, indeed, now has five minutes. Rose was the higher-seeded player. Heading in to the um, heading into the knockout, which means he or she got to choose her color, his color, 
and now Rose has chosen white, so the game is beginning. Five minutes for white, three minutes for black. Black has draw odds in this game, so no matter what, we, somebody will move on in, in the bracket here right after this. I don't know if I have any, any more exciting chess one liners for you right now, Value Detector. I'm having trouble keeping up with the chat and everything else that's been going on. That's right. Crazy stuff here. Okay, well, if you're, if you're Carilla, you're just trying to, you know, simplify the game, but play fast enough that you can get back on the clock. And a sudden death time control, a two-minute time advantage, just massive, right? Just absolutely massive for white. Obviously, Carilla is going to have to play fast, have to keep himself in a position where he doesn't lose the game purely because he's down on the clock. Uh, now that he's kind of equalized, I don't think White really has a big advantage here. The question is, you know, will he get into an equal enough ending that he can force a draw because that's Black's big play, right? Any draw helps. In case of a draw here, Black wins. That's right. In case of a draw, Black moves on. I don't want to close my eyes either, right? Don't close your eyes. Let it be me. That's right. Uh, we are uh, in for another kind of strange tarosh here. Feels like White's playing very Shanklin style chess. And trolling as an anonymous person is something that Shanklin would do. I can tell you that. I'll tell you that. The uh, But it would have to be... Yeah. Pretty strange stuff here. <laughs> uh, a lot of fun, actually. I'm enjoying it. I am enjoying it. Even when I dream of you. Stalemate and black moves on as well. That's right. Any draw. Any draw and black moves on. And uh, right now black is just like we said, playing, trying to play fast enough to continue to simplify uh, white with a massive, massive time edge right now, which is um, kind of what happens here. So this is, this is going to be tough. But okay, Christian doing everything he can to simplify and drive the game toward a position that neither side can win. That's right. Okay. Yep. The next matches, I've been told, will start right after this, with a, after a small 30-second to one-minute break. They will all start uh, that only one match will start first. We'll stagger the next match by about 90 seconds to two minutes, right? So that we can cover each game as they get down to the critical moment. Um, the semifinals will be starting right after this, like I said, after about a one-minute break. And then we will go from there into the finals. So still a lot of chess left to be here. Thanks to all 1,300 of you that are still here. <laughs> really funny stuff going on right now with, uh, with, with a completely anonymous streamer. Craziness, crazy chess being played at a very high level, and uh, and everybody in the world and their cousin wondering. All we can confirm is chess.com is that the person is clean and just playing very, very strong chess. Very, very strong, but human chess. Okay, Carilla had his chance last game. Remember, not the last game they drew. He was Carilla was the one in position to win the the. The last time he had white, where he ended up flagging despite up the extra queen and a rook. So with the extra time, you would think that uh, white is in a big a big uh, advantage here. But I think in time in pure time scrambles, white is uh, not in the driver's seat. And look at this, Carilla might actually be ready to force a perpetual somehow. Something has gone wrong. Okay, they ended up getting out of it. Um, I just realized I was actually watching the stream at Rose's, <laughs> Rose's stream a little bit delayed. Um, kind of fun. Okay. Carilla gets an extra pawn as they head into this endgame. Rose is in trouble. With only 40 seconds, Carilla has to keep playing fast, but he should have enough time to convert on this, right? If you think about it from a bullet game perspective, you'd love to be up a pawn in an endgame with only 40 seconds on the clock. The difference is it's not a bullet game, and your opponent has a lot more time to try to swindle you. But again, 
You think with high-level chess, a grandmaster like Christian Carrillo converts this. Rose has got his work cut out for him to hold, and that's the problem, is even a draw allows black to move on. So how does Car what, what Rose has to be thinking about is, how do I keep this as messy as possible to try to get black to lose on time? That's all Carrillo, that's all that Rose wants. Keep it messy, keep it weird, try to get black down on time. Okay, Carrillo trying to pre-move. Going to look to get some action in with the Knights. Chekaruski, just repeat. That's all you got to do. If he walks up Bishop F1, oh my god! Oh my god! Christian just made it himself! Oh, dude! He was winning and had a draw. And he walked himself into checkmate. Holy bleep! Oh, what a heartbreaker, absolute heartbreaker. All he has to do is just repeat moves. Holy shenanigans, ridiculous, ridiculous finish there. OMG, my team is going to get the pairings ready to start the next round. All of you are going to sit tight and not go anywhere, and uh, we're going to be back in 30 seconds. Wowzers, right? Thank you to everybody who's still here. <laughs> that was just absolutely crazy. Heartbreaking for Carrillo, who had a phenomenal day. You know, uh, you know, barely got into the knockout as it were, especially given that he actually did not place in the top eight. Completely deserving, though. There were so many players deserving right on the bubble. Carrillo was one of them. And uh, Carrillo barely got into the knockout to start with, uh, but really was in every position to win that match. Outplayed Rose's white, not quite enough time. Then had everything he needed, playing for two results as black in the Armageddon game, but walked his own king into checkmate. That clip will definitely come back to haunt him, as I just can't believe that Carilla made it himself. Super heartbreaking. All we can do is continue to buckle up as this masked anonymous assailant, Rose1111, is uh, continuing to... To ride the wave, he will then get paired with the strongest player left in the field next. That's Georg Meyer. The first match to start, I believe, will be Kostinyuk versus um, uh, Mirandi. Sorry, blank there for a second. But after after that, we are going to be uh, going right right into the Meyer and Rose one 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 match. So much drama right now. So much so much stuff. Just craziness. Too many people missing this right now. We've been over 3,000, maybe even 3,500 viewers for the day. 1,300 of you still with us. Thanks to all the support, all the viewers, all of our premium members, all of our subscribers. Oh, I mean, it seems like Rose is gaining a fan base, right? Like I said, all we can do is provide the structure and the event here. I'm, uh, you know, We're going to really make it clear that if this person expects to be back, um, and, uh, and we will add that, you know, moving forward, there'll be a little bit more of a restriction, but all we can say is that Rose is playing clean and fair chess. And, uh, I don't think that's hard to imagine given that we've seen Rose get outplayed by Carilla, who we know is on camera, even his mouse on camera, right? I mean, we know that, uh, Rose is making mistakes and capable of getting outplayed and blundering. Um, he's just a very, very strong human chess player that, uh, that currently is having a good day. So, uh, you know, I can't wait to find out who Rose 111 is. We will work on that. But all we know, you guys buckle up for the final four that have left. Know that everybody here deserves to be here and has worked hard to get into this spot and that the next round of games are getting underway right about now. Here we go. Last seven samurai, chess queen, Mirandi versus Kostinyuk. Um, a C3 Sicilian. Again, I, I think that Kostinyuk is uh, really at home in this time control. Uh, 
Mirandi is also obviously one of the most experienced players on chess.com in the sense that, uh, okay, I mean, Kostinyuk this last year has probably played more on chess.com than, than she ever did in the previous years, right? Playing in a lot of title Tuesdays. We know that Alexandra um, is pretty active. For those of you who speak Russian and maybe even use chess.com in Russian, you know that she's actually been making some amazing content for us. So if you didn't know that, Alexandra Kostinyuk very quickly becoming the face of uh, the face of content in regards to uh, chess.com in Russia, in Russian. So, um, so yeah, Alexandra is, plays a lot, but I think, who am I picking? I guess I'm going on this whole rant because you might be asking me without asking me, who do I think is favored in this match? Um, I don't know. I, I'm going to lean Morandi's way. I'm going to lean Morandi's way, but I think this is much more of a toss-up. I think Meyer is a heavy, heavy favorite against Rose. And, um, and I expect Meyer to move on to the finals and for uh, Rose 1-1-1-1 one, 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 to finally match up against a GM uh, stronger than him or herself, whoever they are. Uh, but, but who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. The, um, the matchup here, I feel like, is, is, is 52-48, 55-45. I'm leaning Mirandi's way as far as who the favorite are. There you go. Mubot updating you with who the final geniuses are, the final streamers are. I said geniuses because I was reading Leonardo Yuri's comment. The next matchup between Meyer and Rose will start in just a few moments. We will have both going. Right now, it feels like Mirandi is on the hunt. Rook C7, getting B7. The main thing here is that White has a ton of compensation for temporarily White was down a pawn, not even anymore, right? In fact, so much so that Kostinyuk decides she needs to give up the exchange and then develop her bishop. Um, you know, the threat of rook c7 check was too strong. Combine that with the fact that she was struggling to complete development. So this is, a, this is one of the very, very dangerous lines of the c3 Sicilian. This is by design, right? Not kind of, not kind of luck here for Mirandi. This variation of the c3 Sicilian, I've lost some very quick games to it as well. Uh, White temporarily sacrificed a pawn earlier in this game to get this initiative, and currently he's driving it home up the exchange. Put the knight on e4 and trade on c5, which is what I expect to happen unless uh, Kostinyuk wants to retreat the bishop. But then the initiative continues to go White's way with a move like rook a1 coming in. Yeah, So I expected that to allow the trade, but again, Mirandi is really in control of this game. We'll check back on it in just a second. The matchup between Rose 1-1-1-1 and Georg Meyer is underway. An equal, equal opening, maybe a teeny weeny edge for White. H3, uh, White playing patiently. Queen to B3 is also a move that's coming, followed by development. You want to get your rooks to these open files and this sort of uh, very open queen's pawn game structure. Get the initiative as quickly as possible because if things do simplify, given that everything else about this structure is equal, whoever infiltrates into the other person's camp when all other things are equal, you know, maintains the initiative as you transition into the end game. So that's kind of the overall educational tip that you can take out of this one as far as these types of positions go. Um, okay, so I think that Rose has a small edge there, like I said, teeny weeny small edge there uh, for Rose. The, uh, the game, the first game between these two is already over, as we predicted. Samurai won himself in exchange. Morandi, Kostinyuk, going to need to win here as White to bounce back. Otherwise, this one might be over. Okay, uh, Meyer, Meyer being the first one to get to these files feels like he has a slight... Ooh, now knight d4 is coming in. Really feels like Meyer has a much better feel for this structure than our, our anonymous assailant here, Mr. Rose1111. Um, I'm not sure why Georg is taking time here. I guess any moves natural like rook c8 are also pretty good, as well as knight b4, as well as knight d4. I, I don't even know. I think that right now Meyer is kind of picking his plan. But something went wrong here. I think that Rose let this position be misplayed, starting with this. You needed to emphasize the file control probably even more than the bishop pair. Taking here, queen to b3, and then get the rook here. This is how white should have played this one, everybody. Um... And again, it's because what I was highlighting about this structure, this is really going to be an initiative that favors black now because everything else is equal. There's no dynamic imbalances, no double pawns, no way that you can play for something and risk that you outcalculate your opponent while they play for something else. Everything here is strategically uh, symmetrical, which means the more powerfully placed pieces are even more powerful. I mean, this bishop dominates this. Very nicely placed. Going to double on the d-file. I'm surprised by Meyer's bishop d4. I was kind of looking for more aggressive moves, but okay. 
All right, we'll check back in on that. Right now, Kostinyuk also up against it, against Samurai. F4. There's no bishop takes g2 because it's check, but I guess you don't need to. You really, you want g4 anyway. Yeah, so why do that? Okay. Yeah, she's taking her time. Black trying to create counterplay here on the queen side. At some point, you want to look for g4 to open up things against this king and maybe flip the script with the rooks coming to the g file. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. I'm not so worried about it. You know, people will always worry about fair play, and understandably, you guys don't have the, the tools and, and the analysis and the CSI approach to, to the game that we do, I guess, where we're confident to make a lot of decisions that uh, even if people don't agree with them, I like to say we know if someone's cheating, whether they're on camera or not. And as a fun fact to you, we have closed people for cheating who've been on camera uh, before in uh, the Pro Chess League and other times. So I won't get much more into that besides to say that our final decision is not based on, on whether a person's seen or not, because there's also earpieces, right? We have data that tells us whether people are playing fairly, and that's why I'm confidently saying I know that everybody in the Final Four is, and I'm going to leave it at that. But I think people feel more secure when they see someone's face on camera. When they see my fat face on camera, they know I'm an idiot. They're like, that guy's an idiot. I don't know. I don't, I don't care that he's cheating, right? Exactly. So that's the point. That's all I'll say about that. I think, I think it's, it's an interesting suggestion. I don't weigh into everybody now who's going to have an opinion that makes themselves feel like they're smarter than chess.com. Go ahead and give it. But here's the thing. People, everyone's clean here. That's what you need to know. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to reconsider the rules after this. I want everybody in the Streamers Championship to have their face on camera and have audio commentary simply because that's our goal on Twitch is to grow an awesomely entertaining chess culture. Not because I think anybody's cheating. I don't think anybody should be winning prizes unless they have themselves on camera, because otherwise, I don't like it. Maybe it's just Dan being selfish. Hashtag Dan selfish time. <gasps> Rook A1 and Bishop A2 mate! Oh my gosh! Ah! Ah! It hurts! Holy shenanigans! Cheat rant followed by brilliant mate on A2. Dude, JJ just went nuts. His stream better be lit. Those guys better be giving him some kind of love, because that was friggin' awesome. Okay, Meyer is uh, up on time. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that is a that is a Craigasm emo waiting to happen. Meyer's up on time, but not by much. And we've seen Rose play very well here. Um, that was bananas. That was that was one of the sexiest mates I've ever seen in my life. Um, especially because, like, I was, like, finishing the rant with you guys, hardly reading your chat, and, like, saw in the corner, and I'm like, Rook A1, Bishop A2! Slow motion, right? ESPN slow motion. Okay, Meyer's still up on time and still better in this endgame, but doesn't really want to draw. I think he'll play for F5. No, Knight C5 check, followed by A5. Uh, okay, he just doesn't want to allow the A-pawn to be lost. The problem for Rose is he's playing too slowly right now. He's going to try to start mixing in those pre-moves, but I do like Meyer's chances. Here comes F4 check. Work the knight around to come after the A-pawn, perhaps. Uh, definitely a position that Meyer's en route to winning. Knight D4 check, followed by knight takes F3, and Bob's your uncle in this one. Knight G5 now hit D4. Meyer plays the moves faster than I can say him, and I'm not even playing. He is damn good. Like I said, I think Meyer, I know Rose is clean, just don't know who he is, he or she. I think Meyer's going to be playing at a higher level than Rose here. Pretty strong. I'm lifting up my leg on camera because I got a cramp again. Cramp. 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 Oh, oh, hip cramp. Hip cramp. Oh, whew. Had a really heavy CrossFit workout today. 20-minute AMRAP, partner wad, calorie row, strict pull-ups, and man-makers. For those of you who speak CrossFit, hashtag you're welcome. Yeah, it was rough. My partner and I... Uh, my partner and I, we finished five rounds in 20 minutes, in case you're wondering. It was pretty nice. Yeah, we had a good time. We pushed it very hard. Like in Siberian prison, we really, really pushed ourselves hard. If you know, <laughs> there you go. Okay, very nice. We move on. Very good. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Yeah, that cramp. You should feel bad for me, Leela, in the chess TV chat. Everyone. Danny speaks only one language fluently, a little bit of Russian. But a lot of accents a lot of the time. That's kind of my deal. There you go. Yeah, I need some electrolytes after that kind of workout. I am going to take my, uh, my vitamins here, though. Who's old? Who's an old man? Come on, who's an old man? I say Danny. You say donkey. Danny, the donkey. Dun <laughs> I, oh, crap. I say who's the? You say donkey. Danny, the donkey. 
I say, Danny, you say donkey, Danny, go. Oh. Okay, very nice. We have here a good time. We made it happen here. Very nice. Okay, Meyer is again in control here, and as White, really think he's the favorite. So what's going on? Does does Alexandra have a chance to come back here? Okay, she's better. She's better against Samurai after that delicioso mate there on A2. That was that was friggin' nuts. Um Yeah, so that mate was nuts, and now you've got Castinia toying with the idea of taking on b3 and then driving the pawn so that's the problem for samurai in fact how does jj deal with it here it comes bishop takes b3 yeah okay he's just gonna take oh she goes into this end game which obscode bishops i'm not sure that was the best choice for her but she will get bishop d4 and that'll be a problem for black sorry for white so okay i think um i think kostinyuk doesn't lose this one but she really has to win right Otherwise, it's two and a half score. So let's keep our eye on this one because that match is about to be over. But I am curious how Meyer is squeezing his edge against our anonymous streamer here. Rook a2, bring the rooks, double the fun, double mint gum, even c3 there to block off the bishop from hitting b2. That should be um, a, a, an isolated gang up on the a pawn for the rest of the game. But Rose is taking time now to decide how to approach it. I think you just bring it over. Yeah, Meyer's going to go for the double rook, the battery. Again, c3 possible. And I think this is just a position where, where, despite the time advantage, you know, black is the one feeling the heat here. Too many positional weaknesses, not enough time. Hashtag title of your autobiography. Um, okay, I don't think Kostinyuk is, is going to win this one. It doesn't mean the match is over because two and a half, they play another game because theoretically she could win the next two and tie it and head it into overtime. But um, I'm going to guess that not being able to come with this one. So I, I guess I made the right pick. Not trying to chew my own horn. I kind of, you know, I said Samurai, I think, is favored in this format. And I think he's just that much faster, despite Kostinyuk really liking this time control. But um, I didn't expect Samurai to win so cleanly. That last game that he won his white with the bishop made. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Did, is it hot in here? Oh, right. right. Hey. Oh, I finally got some respect. Right? Who? Huh. Um, yeah. It's like a sewing machine. Meyer, Meyer's operating a sewing machine and an internet connection at the same time. They, <coughs> excuse me, they drew that game. Um, we didn't see the end of it. They have started their next one. We'll come back to it. But I'm trying to follow the match that may or may not end very closely uh, or, or very soon. Um, I think Kostinyuk's only real chance is to flag him here, so she has to keep playing to try to get him get him down on the clock. Brings the king around. Brings the king around. Don't get mated. That's the right idea. She's working it. Don't get mated. Bring the king to c4. Okay. Uh, if you can, that's a nice little check, right? Trying to trying to shake the position loose. Shake the position loose. Get out of the checks again. That's the idea. Don't allow a trade. And the rook falls. Now, she took the rook, he took the rook on purpose, though, because he gained a little bit of time on that pre-move clock. Take a look at it, right? The problem is obstacle bishops is like the nightmare for your opponent pre-moving because you can't do anything with your bishop. Your bishop is literally... A dumb piece of you know what? Oh my God! But it was a draw. Oh. I have no idea what just happened. Um, all right, so you know, Mirandi stays in charge of this match by holding that draw, and like I said, he made a practical decision there, right? He gave up the house in order to get himself out of that spot where he was down a couple seconds. This is this is what the best blitz and bullet players know how to do, and it, you have a feel for it, and a lot of it is a gamble, right? You have to have a sense of where the position is headed and know that it's now now or never, right? And that's that's exactly what he did. Okay. Rose won 1-1 one, one in a better middle game here, I believe. Uh, so that's interesting. Look who showed up. Tommy Fookin Shelby. What's up, dog? Right? 
I, I, I still can't decide whether Tommy hates me or loves me. Like, I, it just, he, he, he's maybe the best. He lives in my head, you know, and, and that is making me love him given the masochistic, you know, tendencies I have toward myself, you know. So, um, but either way, welcome to the show. <laughs> oh, Tommy, 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 Tommy. Tommy, 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 you behave yourself. Um, Tommy hates it. I know that. I know Tommy hates everyone, but he also secretly loves everyone or he wouldn't hate everyone. You know what I mean? With great power comes great responsibility kind of deal. Spider-Man. With great hate comes great love. Yeah. Tommy would love Hanson. It seems like the kind of... Um, do I want to say this about Hanson on screen? Maybe I won't. Okay. It seems, it seems like they would get along. Um <laughs> All right. Well, all 1,200 of you, nearly 1,300 of you that are still here, thanks for being here. Um, appreciate all the support. And uh, if you have Prime, please consider subscribing via your Twitch Prime, twitch.tv slash chess. All of our premium members, all of our viewers over there, even Super Space Monkey, one of the original trolls on chess.com. Super Space Monkey has been around forever. Forever, Sandlot forever okay super space monkeys here man okay the uh all right this is gonna be a grind where i'm gonna guess that meyer gets this one and puts his opponent on the uh on the back burner shout out to bigfoot gift and a sub to mr shelby himself chess queen though she's better here as white um, I think, just because I like the dangerous aspect of the knights here, but the more I look at it, the F-pawn exposing the second rank is not my favorite thing that's ever happened at this position, that's for show. That's for show. Um, knight g4, taking advantage of the pin on g7. That's how you do work. There may even be a weird threat, like rook takes e4. Holy shenanigans. That's a really strong move by Kostinyuk. The idea, everybody, is, okay, the knight can't take because mate and bake on the G spot, all right? And he misses rook takes E4, I called it. The problem is that rook takes E4 was also threatened because the pawn's pinned. Oh, M gosher. Now you can take. No, you can't. You have knight H6 check, though. No, you can't. You can't play queen takes E4. Oh, man, she goes for the combo that I called, and maybe it was bad. Okay, knight h6 check, if pawn takes, you take here. But if knight h6 check, king f8, there's no follow-up. After queen to c5 check, there is a follow-up. Why take? No, knight h6. Knight h6. Did that work or what? I'm going to have to analyze this in a new game, but I'm not going anywhere right now because I want to see the finish. Knight 5h6, if king h8, fork on f7, if king f8, queen c5 check, there's an e7 block, because, yeah. Hmm. Oh, she goes down. Down, down, down. The red knight just went down. Okay, we're going to quickly go over to Meyer and Rose 111, but this was a nasty position that somehow worked out for black. All you can say is Samurai, Mr. Mirandi, JJ Chess 2018 on Twitch. Give him a follow. Give him a sub for his efforts today, people. Give him a golf clap if you got nothing else in you. And uh, he will be moving on to the finals. Much better than the Monday effort where he lost to uh, the one and only Penguin GM, Mr. Tang. Very nice move. Winning a piece for Rose 1111. But only seven seconds. I'm going to guess that Meyer gets the victory regardless. Irregardless. Irregardless. I found a transformer in the front yard. Irregardless. Irregardless, Maki Mark. I found a transformer. There's nothing to it over there. Rook takes a three. No, no point. Yeah, he just doesn't have any time. Tries to go for the swindle. So what happens when you're down on time, right? Down on time, you commit the crime. Right? You commit the crime, you do the time. Georg Meyer takes a two and a half lead. I predicted he would win this position earlier given the, uh, the, uh, the surgical nature of the IQP position and knowing how I feel about Georg Meyer's chess skills. They, they be strong, you know what I mean? But I didn't expect him to win in a time scramble. So shout out there. Shout out to Rose for keeping up with Georg Meyer, whoever Rose 1111 is. 
But Meyer is in complete control of the match. And uh, I guess he was a GM just that much stronger than whoever Rose is. And he's, he's about to win the match. All he needs is a draw with the white pieces. And our final is going to be what you see right here, peeps. It's going to be Morandi versus Meyer. Say what? Yeah, boys and girls, welcome to the big show. The finals coming up in just a moment. Just a bit outside. Swindle attempt. Yep, Jorg Meyer. Jorg Meyer, working it, working it, working it. Okay, so that's what we're going to see. It's going to be Meyer versus uh, Morandi, and Meyer's got to be the heavy favorite in that format, despite the fact that it's like 3 a.m. in Germany. And Meyer is just an absolute monster. He is going to have the first season of the Streamers Championship tied up before the Streamers Championship finishes. I mean, he is just, he's absolutely out of control here, you know? A swindle is a trick from a lost position. So, uh, you already faced just asked that. It means that the, the term itself, right? There's Why not just call it a tactic? Why not just call it a trick? Well, you can set up tricks for your opponent in an equal or, or even better position, right? Um, you can obviously achieve tactics also in any kind of position. A swindle is a term used to describe somebody who should have lost, but they laid a devious trap and their opponent in, in the driver's seat drove themselves off a cliff. Sorry if that got a little bit rated R for you, but that's a swindle. Exactly. Shout out to all the Diamond members hanging on chat, all of our subscribers, all of our viewers here. Thanks for being here. Meyer is falling asleep on camera, and um, and that's the that's <laughs> it's so funny. There's only going to be two of them left. It's first to three wins. First to three wins. And then we have a final. We're going to take another 30-second break, uh, 30 seconds to one-minute break to get everything set for the final, which is looking to be Meyer versus um, Morandi, if you just got here. And, uh, okay, this is, this is really getting rough. White is just in complete control here, crushing attack on its way. Here comes F5. Maybe G5, maybe H4, H5. I don't know. Probably Bishop F3 now. No, but then F4 might be vulnerable, right? You'd like to put the bishop here, but if things are traded, perhaps there's this. Plays F5 now. One of the main reasons that works is because black removed the knight from the E5 square. So that might have been a mistake by Rose to let the strength continue. At some point, E5 is coming and I might even get F6 or E6. So I'm predicting Meyer wins this matchup versus Rose, eliminating our anonymous assailant, whoever he or she may be, in fine fashion here in this game. Because right now, black is, um, black is just on the hurt. You can even play knight d3. There's no tricks. If rook takes, queen can take it because the bishop guards this. Why did Meyer put the knight on, on D on back on b3? I guess just wants the rook open. Okay, I'll buy it. Um, this bishop on h7 leaves a little bit to be desired, right? I think Meyer just has to calculate. You don't want to play e5 prematurely if d5 becomes an issue, but the moment you can calculate your way toward a break-in of the king's castle, uh, white has plenty of firepower to finish the job. Um, okay, so Meyer kind of patiently waiting for a pawn to explode on. Going to bring this knight to e3 if he has his way to guard d5, so maybe then e5 is even stronger, preventing knight d5. I don't know. I just work here. Um, hmm, very nice. Well, I was just about to highlight it. You see, I did it. Very, I was very close. Uncle Sasha, he's getting old. A little long in the tooth I am now. But hey, Meyer, I'm right there with you, buddy. Okay, very nice. Queen G3, forces thread. Now this is really coming. Really coming. Like, like seriously. Like, it's not going to make you very happy when it happens. Okay. Um, takes and then E5. Here, Eddie the Eagle comes to save the day. Finally, he pushes away. Not sure why it took all day. All right. 
Good stuff. What exactly am I saying about GM Creekor? Where was Creekor today? Creekor wasn't playing today. Too bad. Uh, I don't know what you're asking me about what I think about Creekor. Do I like him as a human being? Yes. Creekor is, is an awesome dude. One of my favorite peeps. Portuguese content for all of Chess.com's official coverage in PT, as it's said. Um, but uh, also just kind of a cool dude. Known him for a long time, since long before he did stuff with chess.com. It's the Chronic. What? Cools of Narnia. Yeah. The Bishop on H7 was a sexy pawn. The problem is Meyer took a little bit too long, honestly, trying to find the right moves here. I actually don't think he's going to win this game. That was uh, misplayed from a practical perspective. I think Meyer... I think I sat there saying just like push e5, trust your intuition, and I, you know, easy for me to say I'm right, but I was right in this case because he spent way too much time trying to find accurate moves. He's going to lose on time. It's not about playing good chess here, people. It's about bringing the troops home. And in this situation, in your situation, for you, your chances would be concurrently improved if I had $200 in my back pocket right now. And uh, I just don't think that Meyer has that $200. So he falls, Goodwill hunting style. Okay, the match continues. I think Meyer just, like I said, o overthought that one. If this becomes a match because now Rose gets the white pieces, he's really going to regret the fact because he was really in the driver's seat there. So all Meyer needs is one draw to move on, but this match is still going. I've already called that I expect Meyer to win the whole thing today. Retainer, retainer. Right now, Mirandi wants a retainer. He's just waiting a retainer for his time. He's sitting there, twiddling his thumbs, hopefully taking a break on his stream. Do you like apples? Well, I got a number. How you like them apples? Um, that's right. I quoted God, Uncle Sasha, Ben Will Hunting, and a whole bunch of stuff in, in, in one, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, Goodwill Hunting, yeah, but you said God. I don't even know what you're talking about there, but that's our bracket. We're waiting to see who moves on. Okay. Rose repeating the same opening he had before. In this case, again, I like Meyer. You know why? Bishop G5 wasn't possible because if Bishop takes F2 check, followed by winning the piece on G5. If Bishop D2 has to be played, Meyer's going to grab the open D file. And again, I think that um, he's gotten the better of this line a few times against, against Rose. King H2 kind of necessary now because Queen takes G3 is a threat. Possibly? Possibly not because this Bishop could be vulnerable. Okay, I expect Meyer still to, to kind of get pieces on the open files and trust the tactics work out for him. The other idea to consider here, he does get rook d8, but look for h4, h5, and h4 for our, uh, from our German friend here. Bishop b6 is nice. Avoid tactics. Now bishop g5 gets in. That's a nice move. Rose kind of picking up the speed here. The one thing you can say about this player, whoever they are, they are very fast. Queen e7, look for h6 to come in next. Um... Actually, this bishop is kind of running out of squares on g5. Likely white will have to trade it. Rose taking the time to consider whether he knows that's coming anyway. Maybe he just wants to play, I was going to say, maybe he just wants to play f4 now. That was a, a mouse slip to say f3. I think f4 is correct. That kind of forces this move h6, I believe. Yep. Takes, takes. Now e5. This is exactly what I expected to happen. The queen can come back, and the question is, does Rose punch it all the way? Because if f5, knight takes e5, f6... White is sacrificing two pawns to blow open Black's king. Decides not to. I'm not so sure. F5, F6 was uh, muy interesting. Muy interesante. Does that work? Is that working for you? Maybe. Um, ooh, battery, huh? Let's get some Energizer bunnies up in this. Bishop B4, bring it to H7. Okay, um, Meyer is, you know, doing what he does best, playing solid chess. Hello, world. <laughs> I 
Tulio Fonseca. Danny Wrench, I don't like you, but I do like Uncle Sasha. Cool. Thanks. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah. Meyer, Meyer kind of work in his situation in the match right now, taking advantage of the fact that all he needs is a draw. Probably Bishop C7 here, if I had to guess. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, he's just... He's, you know, not that that's a bad thing. He's black, right, in a position against clearly a very strong player, whoever they are. And he's trying to, you know, prevent himself from being in a, in a loss situation. Now up almost 40 seconds on the clock. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to be voting for Nigel Short for FIDE president. I do like Nigel. Not really. Do I? I don't even know. I hardly even know Nigel. I don't know. He follows me on Twitter. What just happened? Rose just went all in, and I don't think it works. Oh, my gosh. Does that work? Wow. I don't think it works. King E8, he gets Knight F8. What a, what a practical, nice idea, though. What a what an interesting idea to sack the knight and bring the battery and really put pressure. But I think I think it'll be his swan song because this is really just a bunch of a bunch of smoke, um, and in this case Meyer will be left holding the gun, doing doing the deed. Yeah, a lot of options here. Rook d1 check, queen to c5. I feel like my voice is going. Ah, rah, 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 rah. Um, okay, but you can check and even bring the queen in because I don't see white's mate. That's the problem, right? Check on d1, queen e1. Where's the goods? Where's the beef? White has nothing. So it's not as quickly as I thought it would be, but we are going to get ourselves a Meyer Morandi final. Here he goes. Bring in the dark square battery. The noise in the funk, as I like to call it. Ooh, why is he... I don't understand. Ah, <laughs> caught him in a mouse slip there. It's over. It's over. Get to the chopper. Maya. Maya moving on to the final. Welcome to California, Georg Maya. That's right. Welcome to California, Georg Meyer. Unless he flags himself somehow. It's over. A bunch of pieces are going to be scrambled now. But there's nada that Rose can do. He throws in the towel. And indeed, the final is as predicted. Meyer versus Morandi. Our bracket will be updated. In fact, it has been updated instantly because our team is just that good. In about one minute, the final matchup will start. Don't go anywhere. You've all been beautiful. I can't wait to see if Morandi can bring the pain to the German. But I expect Meyer to continue his dominance of the first season of the Arena King Streamers Championship. And there you have it, everybody. As I said, the final is set. It will be Meyer versus Morandi. Rose 1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. Whoever this incredibly strong chess player is, uh, his run has come to an end. Uh, and we will, we will figure out who he was. Um, definitely not the Dr. Tancredi, because remember, the, uh, the doctor played in this one. Um, oh, wait. No, he didn't. He didn't. I'm not supposed to say that. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it is Dr. Tancredi. I don't know. Definitely not Danny the Donkey. Um, but uh, the next matchup will be set to start momentarily. I can't wait. I'm with all of you. I don't know. Are we going to get brilliancies? Are we going to get blunders? Are we going to get 
you know, are we going to be surprised by, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Donkeys. Who knows? But what's happening here is chess. And you guys are pushing my limit. This is a three and a half freaking hour show right now. I almost dropped a legit F-bomb right there because I've been, this is, man, man, this is a lot of chess today. <clears throat> yeah. Well, everybody who's here, this has been a super high level experience, a ton of fun. Uh, Georg Meyer continuing to perform at the highest levels our species can generate, frankly. <laughs> at the highest level our species can generate is what Georg Meyer does at chess. You know? um, but okay. Now he's got his work cut out for him against Morandi, who's played as well as anybody today, currently even up a little bit on time, and um, playing with the white pieces. Not a structure we've seen yet today. I feel like we said that kind of romantic C and D files open queen pawn game there a few times in a row. More than more than I signed up for, I'll tell you that. Um, and, uh, okay, now after knight b3, knight a4. Okay, black seems to be putting on the squeeze. But look for white to use the e5 square. Maybe even to, if you can get the bishop out of here without having to trade it and bring the other knight in, then you, you might want to punch e4 in through, your, through yourself. That's a nice move, bishop b6. Black was just threatening e5 straight up. Now there may be threats of bishop takes f3 and Ermizo. White would have to take. Okay, so white white liquidates before there's some other, other nasty things happening on e5. Um, but I do think e5 will be in here very soon. Um... Also, b4 is a move coming now. Did Mirandi just put his queen directly on the c file? That can't be right. Here comes b4, taking advantage. Yeah, I was going to say, Meyer took pause just like I did, sees it's a blunder, and says, here we go. Right? Okay, I just I don't think that's going to be enough. The queen can unpin this pawn, but black has definitely gotten the better of this little this little trick of Ruski here. Um, so, not the best approach from Mirandi. That pawn is going to be... Like a lost calf, wishing, wishing, wishing that little calf had the herd around to protect it. It it has it has gone too far. Um, where's Magnus Carlson when you need him? E five. Me like it. Me like it. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, D four is coming. Meyer's doing what strong chess players do best, which is playing the entire board advantage, not getting distracted with this pawn here until he really makes sure he increases his control by the center and even guards the d4 square, which is what he did there. Um, okay, I, I think he might sit with the bishop here because you can even take back with the pawn and then this knight is left on the edge. Okay, he plays this move, which works as well because if you take, the knight gets one step closer to grabbing c5, which is what's going to happen now. I think he's just going to take c5 and uh, be up a pawn. You would be worried if this queen was coming into g5 with mating intentions, but not happening on that g spot, I'll tell you that. Too many things, not enough time. Take on c5. Uh, I say with the rook, yep. Then maybe queen to guard the knight, keep it in, oh, but you have to be careful. If you guard the knight with the queen, f3, pony moves, knight d6, fork town. Let's get, I say use the, you say fork emote, use the fork emote, use the fork emote. Boom! I think I've completely lost it. I'm friggin' exhausted right now. I'm just like going, woo! We are rocking it, right? You know, Merry Christmas, Hallelujah, where's the Tylenol? You know, that's that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> that's funny, Shelby. That's funny. Um, the uh, okay. Brings the heat to the D-file. He's up a pawn. Watch out for E3, boys and girls. That undermines F2, and then things get real ugly. Here comes E3 at some point. Okay, first got to deal with the queen, clearly. Um, but E3 is on the agenda. The old agenda. Here it comes. King opening up. The problem is time, though. You know, the one thing you got to give Mirandi credit for is when you know you're up against a stud like Meyer... You just have to force yourself to move quickly.
because if you have any chance down the road, you don't want to. You don't just want to be getting squeezed on time, right? Put him in a position where he may not be able to handle the lack of increment. You know, so I, I actually appreciate this. Um, not like this. A thousand? What does that mean? The Wesley Cell impression joke. Um, I don't even know what joke you're talking about. Um, if we're talking about Ding's uh, Ding's uh, Ding's uh, impression, was that a, was that a one thousand dollar like bit? That's ten bucks. Wow, awesome. I don't I don't know Twitch money. I need to learn Twitch money. Ask not for whom the bell dings. Um, okay, you guys are losing me. I don't know. The, uh, okay, knight e4, queen e2, knight c3, take b5, why not? Indeed. Time is of the essence, though, if you're Georg Meyer, because at this point, all your hard work could be spoiled, which is exactly how he lost that game to Rose 1-1-1-1, one, 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 one. Um, just trying too hard to play high-quality chess, the sin of great chess players. Um, knight g5, knight e6, here comes f5. No, work it, work it. Bring it in. Oh, you could have traded. 94 check was a fork and a trade, but he missed it. Not going to have another chance. Not going to have another chance, but maybe he doesn't need it. He's actually managed to get up on time now. Going to offer that night trade. Very good. Only seven seconds, though, and Morandi seems to be pre-moving at a slightly higher level. 4.5, 4.4. He's playing instant chess. Uh-oh. Here we go. No more. I have no idea what's going to happen here, but Morandi doubles down on the sack. Bad idea. He decides he's going to catch him in a pre-move. He needed to do what he was doing. He needed to play that tickle wiggle for a few more seconds. Now he's just winning. Okay, Meyer, what are you doing, dude? Just give a check. I was going to say, like, you know, work it. I have no idea what's happening here, but... Oh, man, that was nerve-wracking. Donating for Danny's meds. Appreciate that. You can also Twitch sub for Danny's meds. Twitch sub prime. No. Having fun. Not sure how I offended you, Chess Babe, but my apologies. But uh, the... Uh, um, really appreciate it. I'm trying to find the username who made that donation. You're amazing. Liquid egg product. Is that a thing? Is, that a, is, there, is, is, there, is there a thing about liquid eggs? I don't even know. I mean, is that a product? <laughs> uh, my kid actually has an egg allergy. So it's actually, it's really irritating. Not even because of the eggs. Like he's like, oh, I don't have to eat scrambled eggs. Like win for me, right? And we're like, no dude, like no cake, no donuts. No, like he's like, right? Just mouth just dropping. Egg allergies are just not fun. Meyer, look at Meyer. <sighs> That nasty, nasty, dirty man. He'll. Oh, I thought he would play before. I guess he wants to keep the structure. Use the tension. Work the tension and use the force. Because if he gets the king to c2 and b3's guarded, now black's in real trouble. The reason black can't play rook a8, by the way, is because b4 would come and the pawn is pinned to the undefended rook on said square. Now he's going to use the principle of two weaknesses, perhaps e5, and then try to drive the king around this way. That might be what's, what suits my fancy. Maybe I maintain the tension. Play move like h4. Yeah, look at that. Hashtag Dan predicting 2,700 German moves. Now e5, because now you have your entry point, and they can't keep you out with h6. Can I just retire now? I swear to God, watching Georg Meyer makes me a better chess player. I don't even know how. But Georg Meyer, John Urschel, my buddy, going to John's wedding soon. Um, John Urschel is the biggest Jorg Meyer fan on the planet, so I can't say that I am, but I'm up there. Jorg Meyer is just freaking good. I mean, seriously, he's out of control. Um, and I'm getting better at chess by just trying to predict his chess. I, did, I do think he missed the move B4 when he had the chance, by the way, though. Um, what was the notification? Somebody did something? Liquid egg product. Chess Bay gifted a tier one sub. Thank you so much. And uh, that's your 52nd. That you're, you're a full. You're a full deck, Chess Bay. 52. 
Or are there 52 states? Just kidding. I know the difference. <laughs> King in. Although that, that whole approach there, that little surgery he played, H4, mm, right? E5, mm, right? Then the king penetrates. That was just delicious. And it's not just because I predicted it. It was just honestly, it's just high level, high level chess by Jorg Meyer. He's a monster. He's a monster. Let's go see what he looks like too. While well, he just dominates this rook ending, shall we? Like, what is he even, like, what is he doing? I never know what he's doing. Mom, meatloaf. Like, what, what is Meyer doing over there? What is he doing? What are you doing, Georg? You're just playing awesome chess on your 1997 laptop with your dial-up connection, bro. Get your belief together, man. Dear God. For someone who plays such good chess, you just have the worst stream in the world. Am I just saying it out loud? I am. Wow, Meyer. Meyer, Meyer, Meyer. Uh, amazing. Phenomenal. Uh, Rugula. He's the best. He's the best chess player. He's the best. Right? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what you agreed about, but agreed with me about, uh, Vert, Vert Twitch. Um, I don't even know, man. So, Chess Bay, throwing out a sub to Utah, get me two, two. Utah, get me two, two. <laughs> that sounds like a Ren Tin Tin. I don't even know. Um, yeah. This has been, this will be a four-hour stream by the time we're done. This Arena Kings Royale is getting up there with the Speed Chess Championship in terms of length and entertainment. I'm having a blast, and 1,100 of you are also still enjoying it, or you wouldn't be here, so that's appreciated. Um, I've been, I've been impressed, fascinated, and just blown away by the chess so far today by so many of our players. Um, but right now, the scoreboard speaks for itself if you're in Georg Meyer's camp. You know? He's good. Here, he is good. He's good. He's good. Yep, there you go. Up 2-0. So he played c4. Here comes e4. The tension mounts. Bring the bishop back to h7, I guess. Um, takes d3 first. What's the intermezzo? Does he actually want to blow open everything? What does Jorg see that I don't see? No, he just wanted to do one. Um, I was surprised by both, to be honest. But I think that he anticipates he'll get the c and d files, especially when you have this sort of ninja creeping. Ninjas be creeping, yo. Right? He's got a ninja creeping over here on the diagonal. And, uh, you know, we got a long-distance relationship on D3 about to, about to take place. Um, he takes. He's going to try to pounce with B4, I think. Maybe then play Knight 8. No, he brings the Knight around first. Interesting move. Preparing to simplify, which might be the other way to approach the Queen side, because if you force E5, the Bishop's open. If he trades, then these dark square pawns are even weaker. So now he goes back to it, a5, prying open things. I was anticipating you might try to start working your magic a little earlier, but Georg knows best. WWGD, what would Georg do? WWGD, what would Georg do? That's how I live my life. Georg goes winning pawns, right? That's what Brian Boitano would do. You're running from your life from Georg Meyer. Right? He's brandishing a knife. He's Georg Meyer. Crushing open your queen side. Georg Meyer gonna win Arena Kings. Season one with $50,000 prizes. Arena Kings. Georg Meyer is a BA. Pretty sure I'm allowed to say badass. Look at me. I just said the word badass. Holy, holy crap. I just said that word. <laughs> Georg Meyer is a flipping beast. He won the B pawn. Yeah, he's having a feast. Gonna put that knight on D3. Probably last samurai has to go P. He's getting outplayed now. This is getting abusive to listen to me. Uh, 
take it. Very nice. Put pony here. I predict your moves, Bjorgmeier. You are no better than me. I am your Uncle Sasha. Don't you think for two seconds you have it over me? I will take you down. I will bring my tiger out and get my pills. I am exhausted here. Very nice. Ladia, sedva. He says. Ladia, sedva. Con. Okay. We have this target taking place here. Aha! We have pawn here, but look out. Bishop, I was just about to highlight it. You saw my mouse going there. Bishop to c5. F2 is problem, child. Like that kid with red hair on this American movie. How is this an okay movie? This kid acts like this way. Problem, child. Or is that what it's called? Problem, child? He's crying on his birthday. Knight, con, biot F2. Ladia, de va. Okay, we trade first, but okay, soon here I win this guy, I have extra beep on, I am very happy here, I am Georg Meyer. Oh my gosh, that's how you do it, boys, that's how you win the Arena Kings, with Rook takes G2 and Bishop takes E4, if I don't get some freaking fork emote hype, if I don't get some subs for that emo hype, right? Y'all be crazy, yo. Georg Meyer bringing the pain, dog. Oh my gosh, that was nasty. Honey Badger takes what he wants. Holy shenanigans. Georg Meyer wins the the uh, wins the, all the marbles today with a 3-0 clean sweep. That dude is nasty. Holy, holy moly. Well, if we look at how the standings brought us here. Georg Meyer finished barely in. If those of you who were with us for this whole four hours, I salute you and appreciate all your support. But he was on the bubble. Meyer barely got into the knockout event that we see here. But uh, that was enough. It was all he needed. He took down our anonymous assailant who almost put a damper on our mood. But no, no. He wagged his finger. He said, welcome to my house. And he brought the pain. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Come again. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Seriously. Yeah, that was awesome. That was just bananas. Good stuff. I'm going to check out because I got to be out, all right, before my time runs out. I got like 45 minutes to check the email. Then I got Little League game. Guess what happened on Monday? My son threw a no-hitter in Little League. I'm not kidding. Nash threw a no-hitter in Little League. A complete game no-hitter. The team won 10-0. They had to call the game with that mercy rule, the slaughter rule. Yeah, boys. Anyway, seriously, I'm going to be out. I do have nothing but love and appreciation for you peeps, and, um, and I, uh, I hope that you will come again, and I'll see you on, uh, on the next Arena Kings. As we said, Georg Meyer takes the cake. Peace out.